Montana State is due for a national championship, but if they want to get one this season, they have to go through the tundra in Brookings, South Dakota, against the top seed, the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. Hello, everybody. My name is Keaton Gilogley. An absolute pleasure and honor to be with you today as Montana State tries to head back to the national championship game coming up in the first week of January, but they've got a very difficult task today against South Dakota State. All right, uh, before we dive into things, let's pause 10 seconds for our network station identification. This is Bobcat Football. My name is Keaton Gologley alongside uh, Mikey Ryder and uh, uh, up here is Dylan McPhail as our on-site engineer, and Dan Davies is down on the sidelines today. All right, we are just about ready for kickoff. Right now the uh, captains are walking up to the uh, to the midfield area on top of the uh, Jackrabbit logo, which is in motion running from left to right on a cold, blustery day. The wind is howling. The field still has a bunch of snow on it, but... Uh, Man, it is cold and it is rough out there. And our man down on the sidelines, Dan Davies, is the one who's going to be weathering that storm all throughout the day today uh, down on the field. Dan, how is it down there? Now we'll pick up Dan here momentarily and uh, get that, uh, that Wheat Montana weather report. All right, Mikey, they're about to go do the coin flip. First, let's get your, uh, your keys to the game today. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's going to come down to stopping the run and uh, limiting Isaiah Davis. they got to gang tackle him. He's a big, capable back, 6'1", 200 and change. So that's going to be a, a, a big thing. And then they, they've got to, uh, off of their play-action pass, which is where South Dakota State lives in their pass game, they, they set up the run and then throw with the play-action passes. We've got to find a way to get pressure on, uh, on their quarterback, Gronowski. Um, I think the Cats are, are going to typically run the football. We're no, no uh, you know, uh, crazy thoughts there, but I think what they have to do off of that is win some one-on-one -on -one shots vertically and uh, test those, those safeties for South Dakota State where they may be a little bit vulnerable. And the fi th final thing is just win the special teams battle. So stop the run, get some pressure on the quarterback, take a few shots and have some successful shots down the field, and then they got to win that special teams battle. All right, here we go. Bridger Brewing Three Forks is now open for lunch and dinner. Stop by Wednesday through Sunday to enjoy our delicious food, craft beers, and cocktails. Bridger Brewing beers are now available at your favorite grocery stores and gas stations across Montana. Cheers to every journey being better than the last. All right, we are just about ready to go. A quick look at our Wheat Montana weather report. Currently uh, 10 degrees out right now, partly cloudy. We see some blue skies, and uh, right now about 7 to 10 miles an hour on the wind. So, uh, yeah, Mikey, not ideal conditions to do anything outdoors. No, it, it's, it's bitter cold. Bitter cold, and then you throw in the wind, and that just adds a – a whole new element. Curious to see what that does to the kicking game, as I mentioned special teams earlier, uh, and then also just throwing the football. Is that going to be a possibility? Uh, both of these teams, they want to run the football, but uh, it is going to be a cold, frigid game here. Uh, not a lot of guys in short sleeves or no sleeves, rather, which is a wise call. Yeah. All right, uh, let's check in on uh, Dan Davies down there. Dan, how are we doing? How cold is it down there? We don't seem to be catching Dan's uh, mic down on the field right now, so we will, yeah, work on that. We do see you, Dan, but uh, it sounds like your mic is not working, so we'll get going on that and uh, get that worked out here momentarily. It's frozen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. hopefully he's not frozen and just the, uh, the equipment is frozen. All right, not a huge crowd, but this is a about what we expected. So they average about 13,000. Uh, Dana J. Dykehouse uh, fills up to about 19,000 and just guesstimating probably about six or so are uh, in the house for now. They do have a few rows of students. They left the dorms open and they continued on with uh, some of the, the food services, you know, the dormitories and the halls, because they're done. They, they already had their, their finals, but a nice opportunity, free tickets, and they still get some free lodging in order to come to the game. Love to hear that. Yeah, they were supposed to have finals here last uh, the last couple of days. They actually canceled school because of the snow, so people could get home ahead of that, and uh, it, it resulted in probably a lot of students not sticking around, but Decent showing here. All right, let's try Dan again. Dan, how we doing? You got us?
Frozen cold down there. Yeah, I guess so. All right, we'll get that going here uh, in just a bit. I do see him down there. I saw him down there momentarily. Also uh, saw a, a weird report come out from uh, Ashley Washburn. Uh, she was reporting that apparently Tara Housewright is currently stuck in an elevator here in the press box. It got stuck, and uh, he, he is they're trying to get him out. I don't know if they have more people in there now or, or something like that, but I don't know if he is out yet, but as of about five minutes ago, he uh, he was not up in the press box. He's stuck in an elevator. How about that? Well, we are right next to the coaches. I don't want to be too nosy and peek over the, uh, the curtain here, but uh, my guess is they'll probably wait to get him out of that uh, – out of that elevator before they kick this ball off. Right, and I, I wonder if that is what's going on because right now we're at 3.04 and nobody has yet taken the field. They've already done the, the coin flip and everything. That may be what the delay is right now because, you know, you don't have your offensive coordinator. I mean, what, do you, what are you going to do, you know? Uh, right now Brent Vegan is talking with uh, one of the line judges and a field judge uh, over at the 40-yard line on the other side of the field where the Montana State Bobcats reside today. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I believe Ashley. She's obviously a tremendously talented reporter, as a lot of the people that cover Montana State football are. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of wild, kind of crazy right now. Yeah, that, <clears throat> that's one for the ages. When I, <laughs> when I was uh, had the opportunity to coach here, I, I, was, I remember being down in northern Arizona, and it uh, wasn't quite – during or at the stadium but we had a, a couple staff members get stuck in the hotel uh elevator they were unable to get out of there and get onto the bus and it took about 30 or 35 minutes so the uh <laughs> the <laughs> elevator uh, elevator stories, I suppose. That's pretty unique. Yeah. All right, let's uh, talk about some of these starting lineups. Let's begin first with South Dakota State. Mark Gronowski is their quarterback. Their running back is number 22, Isaiah Davis. The backup running back is number three, Amar Johnson. The tight ends are big men. Tucker Kraft, number 85, 6'5", 255, and Zach Hines, 6'7", 260. Then Jaden Yonke and Jackson Yonke are the uh, top two receivers couple of twins from uh, Madison, South Dakota, so we will see them for sure. Their offensive line is an absolute force. Their left tackle is Garrett Greenfield. Their left guard is Mason McCormick, an All-American. Their uh, starting center is Gus Miller. Their right tackle, or excuse me, right guard is Evan Ber uh, Bernstein, and their uh, right tackle is a uh, guy on the all-newcomer team, John O'Brien, who's 6'5", 300 pounds. Defensively, for, uh, for South Dakota State, they're about as deep as anybody we've seen all year on that defensive line. Reese Winkleman is one of their defensive ends. Ryan Van Marl is uh, the one of the tackles. Caleb Sanders, a tackle. And uh, Cade Tervere is one of the defensive ends. So those guys, that group, that starting four, they combined for 17 and a half sacks this season. Their linebacker is Jason Freeman, an all-newcomer team member. Adam Bach, uh, uh, former All-American, he's a guy uh, who has been hurt for a lot of the year but got back last week. Their middle linebacker and Isaiah Stolberg, kind of that hybrid nickelback as well. Their uh, safeties, Kale Reeder and Chase Norblade. Keep an eye out for uh, Tucker Large and Colby Herter as well. And their uh, cornerbacks are Daly's Beanham and Dyshawn Gale. So those are the starting lineups for South Dakota State. And uh, we do have confirmation. We are The game is delayed because Taylor Housewright is stuck in an elevator. And I don't know if he's walked in just yet. We can, we'll can we probably see if he does. But, yeah, he's in now. Yeah, so that is why the game was being delayed. For Montana State, no surprises in their lineups. Reimer, Reed, Perkins, Sane, and Kettles are on the, uh, on the line. And let's uh, double check. Dan, we got you now, Dan. Hello, guys. Can yes, you hear me? we got you. How are we doing? Give us the uh, Wheat Montana weather report. How is it down there? Yeah, it's uh, 10 degrees. Wind blowing out of the north about 15 miles an hour. The sun's going down. It's about to get warmed up on the field. <laughs> All right, here we go. Montana State and South Dakota State as we get ready for the second semifinal game. Montana State will kick it away. Blake Glessner will have the honors. He will kick from left to right. The Cats in the white uniform tops, navy blue pants, the gold block M on the side of the helmets with the uh, white helmets and the golden blue racing stripe over the top, while South Dakota State in their royal blue unis, white helmets with the metallic blue jackrabbits uh, on the side. Here we go. The kickoff from Glessner is away, and we are moving in the semifinals. This is caught in the end zone. The knee is taken, and we are ready to go. Jaden Yonke with the uh, 
Reception there in the end zone, takes the knee, and South Dakota State will start at their own 25-yard line. Mikey, here we go. Third consecutive semifinal for the Cats. Yeah, pretty exciting times. And this is a tall order for this Cat defense. Really capable, big offensive line, two big targets at tight end. They're going to major a lot of times in 12 personnel, meaning one back, two tight ends, and two receivers. We'll see if they're going to stick to that, but it's going to be a physical, physical matchup this afternoon. Field still dusted in white snow right now as we get going. First snap of the day in a pistol formation. Hand off to Davis through the line of scrimmage, and he is tackled by Callahan O'Reilly after picking up the first down, still carrying the pile all the way up shy of the 50-yard line. That's Isaiah Davis, the first team All-Missouri Valley Football Conference member, the running back who's approaching 3,000 career yards. Yeah, he gets downhill quick. They had one pulling guard there. Cats were just one guy short where they're running that football. This footing is going to be interesting. It's tough on defense when you're trying to get your feet in the, in, the, in the ground and deliver a blow. You don't have a lot of momentum. There's a lot of advantage when you're on offense here, forward momentum. First and 10 from their own 47-yard line. Here's the snap. They hand it off to the tight end. He's running left, hits the numbers, turns up field, and kind of slips and gets tackled from behind. Seymour was there to track him down from behind, and he is about three yards shy of the first down marker, so second down coming up. Yeah, and you can see right there, just an end around. Big tight end there, getting, getting a touch early. But even there, you, you see the footing. His feet slipped. He tried to, to stick his foot in the ground and get north-south and, and was, uh, was unable to do so. It's going to be tough footing there. Everybody's got to adjust today. Going to take a little bit as you get yourself settled. Second and three into plus territory for South Dakota State on the first drive of the game. Shotgun formation. Here's the snap. Fakes the handoff. Gronowski runs right, gets past a man, and then Ryland Ort able to tackle him. But after he picked up the first down, put him up at the 40-yard line. And a fresh set of downs for South Dakota State. They're driving on the first touch of the game. Yeah, and looks very similar to what Montana State wants to do. Run the football, get the quarterback run game going a little bit. Just getting downhill north-south. Just got to catch your breath if you're Montana State here. Continue to be physical. Try and strike at the line of scrimmage. Do a good job of, of block shedding and gang tackling. Just got to settle in. From the right hash, first and 10, South Dakota State up the 39-yard line in catch territory. Pistol formation, two receivers left, one to the right. Here's the snap, turns, hands it off. Davis runs into the line of scrimmage. He's shut down. Although he did pick up about four yards on that play. The offensive line had a nice push. He never really got through that offensive line, but that offensive line gave a push. Yeah, again, it, I mean, a lot of forward momentum here. And when you're trying to get your feet in the, in the your cleats into the turf, it's slick right now. And so though what would be a lot of, you know, two-yard gains, you're able to fall forward for those additional three or four yards if you're on offense. So still a win there for that Bobcat D being physical. I like that gap sound responsibility. Brings up a pivotal second down. Second and seven from the 36-yard line in plus territory for the Jackrabbits. Pistol formation. Here's the snap. He keeps it. Kronowski looking to throw down the middle of the field. That is caught. Touchdown from 36 yards out. Tucker Kraft makes the touchdown catch, and the Jacks have taken the early lead. They strike on the first drive of the game, leading six to nothing. Yeah, just a tight end, Kraft, big target, running right down the middle of the field. And uh, it was Danny Ulia Keppa who was really in coverage, responsibility, trying to carry that vertical, and he was just a couple steps behind, and Gronowski puts it on the money. So the Cats get a little bullied on that first drive of the game by South Dakota State, and they will kick the PAT now. Here's uh, Hunter Dustman. Snap is on the way, right on the money. This kick is up, and that kick is good. And South Dakota State has now connected on 123 consecutive point afters. All right, we'll take a break. Montana State gives up a touchdown on the first drive of the game. Cats get their first touch coming up after this break. 12-17 to go in the first quarter. Montana State trails 7 to nothing against the Jackrabbits. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
Now to uh, Firehouse Subs, who keeps us uh, fed and full during home games throughout the season. Montana State gives up a five-play, 75-yard touchdown drive from South Dakota State, and they trail 7 to nothing in the semifinals of the FCS. 12-17 to go in the first quarter, and uh, the Jackrabbits will kick things away from right to left. The Montana State offense will get their first opportunity here as Hunter Dustman lines up. He's the guy who's going to be doing the uh, place kicking and the uh, kickoffs and the punting as well as the ball has been knocked off its stand. So he'll try to line this thing up again. Marquis Johnson stretching out, standing with his heels on the checkered blue and yellow of the end zone to our left. South Dakota State ready to kick it away. Cats get their first opportunity on the offensive end, averaging over 500 yards of offense per game this season. Dustman's right-footed kick is away. It is short, and it is caught with a run at the 15-yard line by Derek Snell. He cuts left up the numbers and bowls over a man past the 30. So the Cats will take over just shy of the 35-yard line. All right, here we go, Mikey. Cats get their first opportunity. Yeah, and I think we're going to see uh, an aggressive, you know, downhill running style that, that Coach Housewright wants to, you know, attack a defense with. Uh, I, I've even just noticed on the kickoff, when you're trying to tackle, it's hard to deliver a blow, whether you're on defense or on special teams. You're on skates. You're trying to react. Advantage to these Bobcats here. Want to see a nice, successful drive here. Ball security is paramount. Sean Chambers starts as the quarterback. Tommy Mallott is the halfback. Here's the snap. Chambers keeps it. He runs left, gets past a defensive lineman, and then he is pushed out of bounds up at the 36 or 37-yard line. Second down coming up after about a three- or four-yard game. Yeah, utilizing Tommy as a little bit of a decoy there. Pulling guard, pretty well blocked up front. Nice chunk play on first down. Montana State averaging 332 yards on the ground per game. South Dakota State giving up just 85. Malott now in at quarterback. Sean Chambers lined up as the halfback. Two wide receivers spread out to the right side on second and six. Here's the snap, fakes the handoff, fires into the flat. Caught with a dive by Willie Patterson after a gain of about two yards. It was a little bit off the mark. He had to come back toward the line of scrimmage to make that catch. So now, all of a sudden, it is third down for Montana State. Third and two, and it feels like a big third down opportunity for the catch. Sean Chambers is still out there with Malott. Both tight ends, Pickering and Snell, are out there. Malott spread up spread out in the slot to the left side and uh, spread out wide is Willie Patterson along with Cleavan Thomas. Snell in motion from right to left, set up as a fullback now. Here's the snap to Chambers. He keeps it, runs up the middle, pushes through the line of scrimmage and picks up the first down. First interstate bank, first down. The Cats able to convert on third down. Yeah, big third down there. Nothing fancy, just a zone block. Sean Chambers calls his own number. Nice seam there, well blocked. There was a pretty good gap right in the A gap and he finds a Enough work, puts his head down and delivers a the blow there again. Good job moving the chains, that's a big first down. Up to the 47 yard line, Cats still in their own territory, 10.35 to go in the first quarter, Montana State down, seven to nothing. First and 10, Malat takes the snap, he fakes the handoff, looking to throw, he spins out of three men and then tripped up, that's a sack. A rare one taken by Tommy Malat, but boy, South Dakota State got three blue jerseys in the backfield. Yeah, they brought some pressure there. And uh, more than that offensive line for Montana State could, could bring. I think that might have actually been a corner blitz there, uh, in, you know, coming from the boundary. And uh, able to get home. I thought Tommy was going to escape it there the last second. Second and 12. Shotgun formation. Here's the snap to Chambers. He hands it off to Malott, running left, looking to throw. He does take a shot, and it's caught by Cleveland Thomas, who holds on after getting hit twice. First down for the Cats up to the 43-yard line. What a catch by Cleveland Thomas. Yeah, what a throw. Nice creativity there. Taylor House right. It really was a give to Tommy Malott off the left side. He ends up uh, having a run pass option. He throws it to Cleveland Thomas on an over route, and Cleveland Thomas was ping-pong between two defenders. Good job holding on for the first down. 
First and 10 for the Cats at the 37-yard line in plus territory from the left. Tash mark. Sean Chambers in it. Running back. Snap to Malott. Fakes the handoff. Hit as he throws. Down the right sideline. Thomas made the one-hand catch. And he's out of bounds inside the 10-yard line with a flag on the play. What a miraculous one-handed catch by Cleveland Thomas. It's pass interference. They're going to decline that. Yeah, that one's going to hang on. What a great oh, catch man. in traffic. And pass interference. Defense. Number seven. Penalties declined. Result of the play is a first down. <clears throat> I'll be honest. I thought that was pretty solid coverage. I don't know if he was if he was draped on him. Regardless, magnificent catch there by Cleveland Thomas. Considering all the elements, too, uh, really nice throw by Tommy Malad as well. He was under pressure. He took quite a lick and still was able to deliver the ball. First and goal from the four-yard line. Ifonse and Chambers are flanking Tommy Mallott. Nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Cats down 7-0 in the semifinals. Willie Patterson spread out by himself on the left side. We've got a whistle and a timeout called by South Dakota State. Bobcat football is presented by My McDonald's Rewards. Download the McDonald's app to start earning free McDonald's and great game day deals. So a timeout by uh, South Dakota State. I don't think they went to immediate timeout, right? No, it doesn't look like I don't like think it. so. Yeah, they're keeping it here. So for Montana State with 8.56 to go in the first quarter, Cats trailing 7-0. Dan Davies is down on the sideline here. Dan, this is a nice push here for the Cats. Big third down conversion, a heck of a couple of throws by Milan. Yeah, a couple good big time third down conversions there and a great catch to get the Bobcats deep in the red zone and the four yard line threatening to score here on first down. Chambers is out there, so is Isaiah Fonse. This is Afonse's first snap now. So Malat is the quarterback, and then Afonse and Chambers are the running backs in a shotgun formation on the right hash mark. Willie Patterson by himself at the top, over to the left side. Snell and Pickering, the tight ends, flanking the offensive line. Here we go. First and goal to go. Here's the snap. They give it to Afonse. Bounces off the line, and he is popped at about the two-yard line. Maybe picked up two yards. Second and goal to go. Yeah, big Caleb Sanders in on the stop. I know talking to the uh, offensive staff a little bit in the airport yesterday, talking about some of this personnel, and Caleb Sanders, he's somebody that they're that – they're, want to have their uh, eye on all game long. I don't want to say that they're worried about him, but he is. He can be a problem if you let him be. And there he is right there making a nice play. But still, nice, tough physical run there for two yards by Isaiah. Second and goal from the two, same formation. And now Chambers shuffles into the quarterback position. Here's the snap. Chambers keeps it. He runs up the middle. Undercut underneath. Did he get there? No! Inside the one-yard line. Third down coming up. Yeah, and Reese Winkleman, he comes off holding the shoulder there. Their stud defensive end. Yeah, he was the one with the stop. He went shoulder into the thigh of Chambers. So here we go. Third down and a yard to go to the goal line. Patterson and Thomas spread out to the left side. Sean Chambers basically is a tight end on the left side of the line. Tommy Malott, the quarterback in a shotgun formation. Now they're pretending a little confusion. Chambers gets underneath center. He takes the snap, still on his feet, trying to push forward up to the goal line. No, did not get in. They tried to fake it. Tommy Malott tried to pretend like he was confused. Chambers came in under center, took the snap, and tried to sneak it in. He did not, and now it's fourth and inches to the goal line. It looks like the Cats are going to go for it with 7.20 to go in the first quarter, and Montana State down 7 to nothing in the semifinals. Yeah, it's on the one-foot line right now, guys. So the Cats are going to go for it here. Sean Chambers in at quarterback. Patterson to the left, Thomas to the right. Fitzgerald and Snell on the left side of the line, Pickering in there as well. Shotgun formation. They've stacked the line. Here's the snap. Chambers runs up the middle. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bobcats. Sean Chambers on fourth down, able to sneak it in, and the Cats respond with a touchdown on their first drive. Rushing touchdown number 19 for Sean Chambers. Yeah, credit that offensive line. Getting just enough push, and Sean Chambers doing the rest. He's a big, big, uh, capable runner. He's limping off just a little bit. Seems to be... A, a little bit uh, ginger, but hope he'll be okay. And now a bad snap. Layton dropped it. Glester picks it up. He's running to his left outside the numbers, and he is pushed out of bounds. A low snap by Tommy Sullivan. Layton couldn't handle it, and the Cats unable to convert on the PAT, and Montana State is down 7-6 to six with 6.55 to go in the first quarter. Oh, man, here we go. Playoff football, baby. 
Time to take a break. Again, the situation, 6.55 to go in the first quarter. Cats down 7-6. to six. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Six fifty-five to go in the first quarter. Montana State trailing South Dakota State seven to six. Kendall Ford, Lincoln of Bozeman, your Ford truck headquarters. From F Series trucks to Ford SUVs, we can help you find just the right Ford for your busy life. Stop by or visit KendallFordBozeman.com. Cats with a rare missed PAT after the scoring drive on their first uh, possession of the ball game. And Tommy Sullivan's been a, an elite snapper for the Cats, but snowy and cold conditions, and you're going to have one bad one a year, and that was it. Yeah, he was off the mark, and, and nothing to worry about now. You, you, you hate to be chasing points early, but still, uh, it's still very early in this football game, and they'll come back from it. 10 play, 67 yard drive, covering over five minutes for the Cats. And Sean Chambers with his 19th rushing touchdown, now second in the nation. Here's the kickoff, a little bit short, caught at the five, drop, picked back up by Jaden. Running, angling through the middle of the field to the left hash mark and undercut there. Tyrell Thomas got him. And uh, South Dakota State will take over at about their own 20 yard line. Mikey, the Cats did not have any answers for South Dakota State when they had the ball to start the game. No, they, they, they looked like they were on their heels uh, and really not being the aggressor. Again, I just want to see how they settle in, especially on the defensive line. You got to really at least have a stalemate there at the, at the line of scrimmage. They've been able to control the line of scrimmage so many games this fall. They got to step up here in the trenches. It's going to start there. That's going to allow those linebackers to roam free and make tackles as needed. First and 10 for South Dakota State at their own 21-yard line. Here's the pistol snap. They hand it off. Johnson runs right, and Rylan Ort able to wrap him up, but not before uh, about a 7- or 8-yard gain. So that's the backup running back, Amar Johnson, who has been very, very productive throughout this season. He did not play in the semifinal matchup last year. Yeah, he's getting quite a few carries. got over 100 on the year, so, you know, definitely a dual approach here with both he and uh, Isaiah Davis. Isaiah Davis, Isaiah getting most of the carries but absolutely getting a ton of carries is number three, Amar Johnson. Yeah, those two guys combined for 66% of their overall rushes this season. He's in the backfield along with Davis. Kurnowski, the quarterback, they take the second down snap. He fakes the handoff, fires over the middle, caught by Jaden Yankee, and he is tackled by Rylan Orton just across the 45-yard line up to the 47. First down for South Dakota State. Mark Kurnowski, only a sophomore, but he was the starting quarterback that took them to the national championship game in the spring 2021 season, and he has been really, really good this season. Yeah, that was a little run-pass option. And uh, he opts to, to pull it and hit Yonke on a little slant route. Brody Greeby now in the football game coming in for Ken Iden. He's been nursing a hamstring injury. Good to see him back out there. Shotgun formation. Two receivers right, one to the left. Here's the snap. They keep it. Gronowski does. He fires over the middle. Incomplete. Oh, he had a man wide open. Tucker Kraft had all that white turf around him, but he overthrew him, and Kraft could not reach up and haul that in. Big break for the Cats. Second and 10 coming up for South Dakota State. Yeah, big break there. That was a, a breakdown in coverage. 
just a, a wide open target. And those are big boys I know they have game plan for on the defensive side of the football. You cannot let those guys get lost. They'll beat you. South Dakota State with the football right in the middle of the field at the 46 yard line. Empty backfield in a shotgun formation. Three wide receivers right and a pair of tight ends on the left side of the line. He comes under center. Gradowski takes the snap, sneaks it up the middle, pushing the pile forward close to the 50. Put him down at the 50 yard line even. So a four yard gain bringing up third and six. Yeah, crazy to see, but a quarterback sneak there on, uh, on second down. And uh, he still got a pretty good push, but that's the type of day it is. I think if you can just get that type of momentum and get defense on skates, they're confident in getting five yards a pop both on, a, bo on both the offensive side of the ball, whether it's South Dakota State or Montana State. See if these cats can get off the field. This is a big third down for the Bobcat D. Five minutes to go in the first quarter. Cats down seven to six after a missed PAT. Here's the shotgun snap. Gradowski running up the middle, shifting on the right hash mark, up near the first down marker, and he got it. Ty Okada with the tackle, but he got it right at the marker. They convert on third down. First down coming up at the 44-yard line in plus territory for the Jackrabbits. Yeah, Montana State brings some pressure, but they actually pull the guard away from that pressure. And Gronowski does a good job of picking his way through the defense and getting the first down. First and 10 from the 44 yard line. Pistol snap, they give it to Davis. He runs up the middle and he is met immediately. Couldn't go anywhere. Somebody got in there and wrapped up his ankles. It might've been Ort or Louis Lakepa. Either way, nice stop after a one yard rush by Davis. Yeah, what I really like there is the, the play of the defensive line really establishing the, the line of scrimmage. It's a big, capable unit of South Dakota State. That was a little bit of a stallmate there. And I liked, it really allowed Uli Akepa to come in and make that tackle. It's gonna be the, the tell of the entire game is who can control the line of scrimmage. Second and nine from the 43 yard line. Pistol formation. Here's the snap. They hand it off. Johnson runs left. It's got a little bit of a hole, and it's crowded. Quickly taken down to the 40-yard line. Callahan O'Reilly, who carried out the uh, Montana flag today when the Cats took the field, able to get to him, put him down at the 39-yard line, and another huge third and five coming up for South Dakota State. That was a big tackle there uh, by Callahan O'Reilly coming from his, his linebacker position. It looked like they actually had a seam and were outmanned, the Bobcat D were, but he was able to scrape over the top and make a nice tackle, bringing up this third down. Iden, Greeby, Seymour, and Valdez, the defensive line for the Cats on third and five. Pistol formation for South Dakota State. They take the snap, hands it off to Davis, runs up the middle, sheds one tackler, shoves off another man, still on his feet, and he drags a man past the 20-yard line, up to the 19-yard line, into the uh, red zone for South Dakota State. That is a big man run. Yeah, a couple missed tackles there. Danny Uliakepa tried to time up the blitz but takes on a nice puller and really Callahan O'Reilly has got an opportunity to take him down he leaves his feet in a big back like Isaiah Davis he's tough to bring down if you're going to leave your feet big chunk play by the Jackrabbit offense ended up being Brody Greeby chasing the play from behind getting there and bringing him down first and 10 from the 19 yard line for the Jackrabbits now Wildcat formation, Isaiah Davis takes the snap. He keeps it, Davis moving up the middle, trying to shuffle across the line. He can't, Daniel Louis Lakepa grabs him with a bear hug and he gets dragged by a yard or two. Put him up at the 13 yard line, so that's still turned in to about a six yard gain. Yeah, another opportunity, Callahan O'Reilly's got him in the hole one on one, but it's tough. You almost feel like you're playing on skates down there. Tough to get those cleats in the turf. It looks like they're really having to catch as opposed to deliver blows down there on the Bobcat defense. Clock running at the 155 mark in the first quarter. Montana State trailing seven to six. Second and four for South Dakota State at the 13 yard line in the red zone. Pistol formation. One receiver right, here's the snap. He gives it to Isaiah Davis, runs up the middle and he is met just shy of the five yard line. He picks up the first down running up along that left hash mark and is down at the six yard line. First and goal to go for South Dakota State. Yeah, just a simple zone play there. South Dakota State does a good job. Like washing one side of the line of scrimmage down. And Isaiah Davis really ends up being one on one with one of the Bobcat defenders. And we've mentioned he's a load to bring down one on one. First and goal to go from the six. 
113 to go in the first quarter. Pistol formation again. Here's the snap. He hands it off. Davis running left through the line of scrimmage, and he's hit into the end zone, and they say he is down. He was down just shy of the goal line, and it'll be second and goal from inches out. Hurrying to the line from the left hash mark. Gronowski stepping up under center, takes the snap, trying to push forward. He is waiting for the signal. No signal yet. He is down, haven't seen the signal yet, and there it is, touchdown for South Dakota State. A one yard rushing touchdown for Mark Gronowski, his 11th rushing touchdown of the season, and the Jacks have taken a 13 to six lead with 40 seconds to go in the first quarter, and they are carving up this Cats defense right now. 154 yards on the ground on two drives. Yeah, yep, and I, again, not an excuse, but I'm just telling you, being in this situation and playing in a game like this, the footing is so, so, so challenging when you're on defense and you're trying to react instead of, uh, you know, really be the deliverer of a blow. It, it's a hard thing to do because you don't have a lot of footing and you're trying to control the line of scrimmage. So I think both offenses will have an advantage here today. It's just going to be who can maybe get a stop on the defensive side of the ball one way or the other. We'll take a timeout. South Dakota State, two possessions, two touchdowns. Cats trail it. 14 to 6 against the Jackrabbits with 40 seconds left in the first quarter. Montana State coming up on offense after this timeout. This is Bobcat Football from Learfield. Builders First Source is the leading supplier of professional grade building materials. Find one of our nine Montana locations at bldr.com. Builders First Source, a proud sponsor of Bobcat Football. Hello to the Smilfingers tuning in from East Lansing, Alex and Christine. 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Montana State trailing 14 to six against South Dakota State. Dan Davies is down on the sideline right now. Dan, what are the field conditions? How hard is it to get a grip with your spikes right now? Yeah, it's, it's really difficult for those guys to as you guys are talking about, to try to get a good plant and be able to explode through a block or shed a block. So, but so far, South Dakota State's been able to do that. And the Bobcats just need to get better at that. Back up in the first Interstate Bank broadcast booth. The football has been shoved off the uh, off the tee once again. It does look like some of the wind has died down, at least according to the American flag that's to our left of the corner of the end zone. But that football still got knocked free. It is cold out there. They've got all different ways to stay warm uh, on those sidelines. They've got the heaters. They've got some uh, kind of heating sheds, actual sheds you can walk into to warm you up as well. Here's the kickoff from the Jackrabbits. Short kick. Here's Marquis Johnson with a head of steam. It bounces at the 15-yard line. He picks it up on a hop. Johnson running up the middle of the field, and he is wrapped up just shy of the 25-yard line. And again, you could see him kind of questioning his footing. Yeah, and he, he didn't even get tackled. He slipped and fell. So it's going to continue to be an issue. Just got to do a good job of dealing with the elements. This Bobcat O has got to see some of this momentum. As they got the ball back. Awesome, beautiful drive, previous uh, uh, previous drive. You just got to carry on that momentum here, and it starts up front with that offensive line. 
the Cats were able to do it with a couple of big passing plays from Tommy Mallott to Cleveland Thomas on that last drive. Pistol formation, Tommy Mallott along with Isaiah Fonse steps up into a traditional shotgun formation now. No Sean Chambers who went limping off on the last drive. Here's an option run after the snap. Mallott pitches to a Fonse, bobbles, it's loose. That ball is loose. Where is it? It's a loose ball, waiting for the signal. Did it go out of bounds? Waiting for the signal from the official. It was dropped by Isaiah Fonse. The officials have not signaled either direction. It may have bounced out of bounds before somebody was able to actually recover it. Waiting for the actual signal here. Let's get word. Oh, hang on, they're still talking. About to get word from the official. The ruling on the field is that the offensive player touched the ball while out of bounds. It is a backwards pass out of bounds, second down. Okay, huge, huge break for Montana State, which really has not turned the ball over in quite some time, almost two months. Yeah, we haven't seen a whole lot of that. Fortunate bounce there for the Bobcats. They need it. Isaiah Fonse, who's been so sheer-handed. They got away with one there. That's a lucky break. They reviewing that? Cats have only turned the ball over four times in the last nine games, so they're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at this now. At Firehouse Subs, a portion of every purchase helps provide much-needed life-saving equipment to first responders across the country. That's why at Firehouse Subs, they make their subs differently because their subs can make a difference. You know, Mikey, with two teams like this, both experienced, both incredibly skilled and disciplined, it's those types of turnovers that can absolutely be a difference in this ballgame. Yeah, and in a game where... Uh, you know, you, you really are at a disadvantage on the defensive side of the football. Uh, the You know, just one possession can really be a big deal. And so you, you don't want to give a ball back to a South Dakota State. It sure looks close. I'm just watching the replay here. And it's going to be close. So they are uh, reviewing this fumble. It was definitely a fumble. It's a question of, did it go out of bounds? Did Isaiah Fonse touch it while he was out of bounds so that it still goes back to Montana State? Because it was clearly recovered by South Dakota State, although even the jackrabber that jumped on it, his elbows were kind of on that sideline. And, th and that's what I wonder. I, I don't know. I think that's what I see based on the replay is that this guy for South Dakota State also touched the ball, but you're right. He was uh, elbows were on the really on the, the out of bounds line. The which would then give give the ball back to the offense. Offense is staying out there, guys. All right. So hopefully this is good news for the Cats. And uh, South Dakota State sending their defense out there right now as well. No official word yet from the officials as the referee still has the headset on. And now he has taken it off and will make the official call. Let's hear it. After the review, the on the field is confirmed. It's second down. Okay, confirmed. Cats avoid a major major mistake and they will go back to work second down for Montana State from the 31 yard line it's only second and three with 22 seconds left in the first quarter shotgun formation snap to Malat. he will keep it running right gets to the numbers has one man to try to beat and he's brought down right away tackle to the 30 yard line that is a heck of a tackle and stop on the outside yeah they did a pretty good job run fit wise the South Dakota State defense got beat on a lot of quarterback run game a week ago against Holy Cross. They look to be pretty sure-fitted on the defensive side of the football right now. This is going to be a pivotal third down for the Bobcat O. And a timeout called. What do we got? Uh, oh, no. end of quarter. <laughs> there we go. End of the quarter. We'll take a break. Well, you get lost in it already. Feels like we've been here a month. End of the second quarter, third and three. Huge third down for the Cats, their own 31-yard line when we come back. South Dakota State leads it. 14 to 6 over Montana State. This is Bobcat Football from Learfield.
Montana State trailing 14 to six with the football facing third and three to start the second quarter from their own 31 yard line. Quick check of the town pump stats after one quarter of play. The Cats had one town pump touchdown on a rushing TD from Sean Chambers, number 19 of the season to move him into second place in the nation. Tied with Asher O'Hara of Sac State. The national lead is at 21 right now. Overall in that first half, South Dakota State, or first quarter rather, South Dakota State 154 yards, Montana State with 74, but they have the ball right now. And a hello to uh, Jared and Katie Mullen tuning in today, listening in as the Cats try to get back to the championship game for a second consecutive season. Sean Chambers was really limping on that sideline. He is not out there now. He played pretty much every snap on that first drive, but he is not out there now. Montana State needs three yards to keep this drive alive from their own 31-yard line. They have two receivers right, including the tight end Snell, two receivers to the left, Patterson and Dowler. Isaiah Fonse in the backfield along with Tommy Mallott from the right hash mark in a shotgun formation. Mallott calls out the protection, steps up one more time, and now has what he wants. Justice Perkins ready to snap. Here it is, chest high, Malat looking to throw, hit as he delivers the toss down the right sideline and out of bounds, but there is a flag. Incomplete, but a defensive pass interference. The Cats will have this drive continuing. Here's the call. Pass interference, defense, number two, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Big call for the Cats, Mikey. Yeah, big, big call. I, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure, one, if it was catchable. Uh, That's what I thought. And, and two, I thought... A pretty darn good coverage, but take the bounce uh, when it comes your way, I suppose. I don't think that was catchable. I think the cat, Cats just got a huge break. Huge break to extend a drive in, in a time when you, you don't want to be given possessions or having empty possessions right now it's, when it looks to be a back-and-forth offensive game. Montana State with the football down 14-6, to 14.55 to go in the second quarter. First down from the 46-yard line. Here's the snap. Malat. Nope, we got a whistle and a flag. I think a false start's coming here. Yep. Back him up. Moving early. False start. Offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty, first down. Jacob Kettles dinged, who's played very, very well this year. He replaced Marcus Weir earlier this season, who went down with a season-ending injury. Mike, this is one of the first times in a while we've seen the Cats a bit on their heels. Yeah, and you're right. They are on their heels. It's a good way to describe it. Just trying to get momentum. You, you take a few steps forward, then a few steps back. They got to gather themselves here and harness some of this momentum. They're a capable football team. Got to claw your way back into it here. Shotgun formation, first and 15 from the 41 yard line in their own territory for Montana State. Here's the snap to Malat. He hands it off to Isaiah Fonse. Running right, shuffles through the line of scrimmage, and he gets up close to the original line of scrimmage after a three yard gain. Second and long coming up. Just an outside zone play. Isaiah, who typically is so good. Uh, his first cut, he gets through that first hole, love that first cut, that's where he thrives. A little bit ginger there, trying to put his foot in the ground. See if they can make a nice chunk play on second down and make it third and manageable. Trips to the right, one receiver to the left. Afonso is the running back on the right hash mark, facing second and 12. It is slick out there right now. They've had a ton of snow over the last uh, basically week, and there's just a light powder of white across the entire field. Here we go, here's the snap to Malat. He hands it off to Davis, runs up the middle, and he is wrapped up right away. Only a two yard gain, and a beautiful tackle by Adam Bach, who missed a bunch of time with an injury, his second game back, and he was able to take down Afonso one on one in the middle. Yeah, Afonso had a little bit of a scene there. Adam Bach, who's been so productive during his time at South Dakota State, that was a nice open field tackle there. Third and 10. From their own 46. Just under 14 minutes to go in the second quarter. Montana State down 14 to six in the semifinals of the playoffs. Shotgun snap, Malat looking to throw. Hit as he delivers down the left sideline. Willie Patterson, he got it at the 30. What a two-hand catch by Willie Patterson who was draped in coverage and Montana State has a first interstate bank first down. Yeah, great ball, nice protection up front and Willie Patterson doing a good job. Contested throw, he gets his, ball, or his body torqued back. Catching that thing with two hands and a really nice throw by Tommy. Didn't have a lot of real estate, but drops it in the bread bucket. Tommy Malott, four for four through the air to start the day. 
Shotgun formation, first down from the 30-yard line. Here's the snap. Malat looking to throw again, scrambling out to his right, being chased. High steps out of one man, turns up field at the right sideline, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. So that'll bring up second and 10. But Tommy Malat, 4 of 4 through the air, 80 yards passing so far. Dan Davies down on the sideline. Dan, these are some passes by Tommy Malat right now. Passes and catches. That was a great catch by Willie Patterson on that far sideline. And uh, that time... Uh, Tommy Mallott just uh, was looking downfield but didn't see anybody and just scrambled out of bounds. Looks like uh, Sean Chambers is back on the sideline but not in the game. He's been limping around after taking a couple of big hits before the Cats scored a touchdown on their first drive. Here's their second drive and too many men in the huddle for the Cats are going to get another penalty here. Derek Snell coming off late. Illegal substitution. Offense. 12 players. Information. Five yard penalty. Second down. Another mistake by Montana State. Yeah, and uncharacteristic. Haven't seen a lot of those, especially when it comes to the substitutions and, and some of those simple penalties. You know, you can get away with and, and be okay as a coach with some holding penalties that are more of the effort. But uh, right there, you don't want to give up five yards based on substitution. But here we go, second and 15. From the 34-yard line, three receivers left, one to the right, empty backfield in a shotgun formation on the right, hash mark on second down. Here's the snap to Balot. He keeps it, Malat runs up the middle, met right away, and he is tackled immediately at the line of scrimmage. This defensive front by South Dakota State has been an absolute force this season, and right now they're doing a nice job bottling up the Cats. Yeah, they're doing a good job, their defensive front, and here they go in a substitution. Uh, they really play in waves, this, this Jackrabbit defense does, keeping guys fresh, particularly on the defensive front. They have a lot of guys that have played a lot of football. Third and 14, Cats facing another crucial third down. From the right hash mark at the 34-yard line in plus territory. Elijah Elliott in the game for the first time today as the running back next to Malat. Two receivers right, two to the left. Malat ready to go. Claps his hands, takes the chest high snap, looking to throw. Steps up under pressure, scrambling out to the right, and we've got a whistle. The play's been stopped. Delay of game. Oh. Offense. Make it third and 19. Dan, we really haven't seen Montana State kind of reeling like this in a long time. Yeah, uncharacteristic uh, penalties here for Montana State. And uh, a little bit unsettled out right now. They got to get uh, back on track. Third and 19. Just over 11 minutes to go in the first half. Montana State down 14 to 6. They're at the 39-yard line in plus territory. Two receivers right, two to the left. Elliott the halfback. Shotgun formation, snap to Malat. Gives the handoff to Elliott. He runs up the middle, and he is tackled just across the 35-yard line. So fourth down coming up for Montana State. They will run this kicking unit out here, and Bryce Layton will punt. It's slick and slippery out there. It's going to be tough to kick field goals today. Yeah, I don't know that field goals are much of an option outside of the you know, 30 range, 30 or, uh, yard range max, uh, if I had to, to, to guess. But big punt here, opportunity to pin them deep. And uh, this Bobcat D should be rested. They've been on, off the field for a chunk of time. It's a big special teams play. Catch sideline getting a little sun. Here's the snap, Leighton with the punt. It will bounce at the five, swatted back at the goal line, and Tommy Sullivan picked it up at the five, but they are calling a touchback. Just broke that plane. Boy, that was close to pinning him in deep. Yeah, missed opportunity there. All right, we'll take a break. South Dakota State will take over when we get back. 10-17 to go in the first half. South Dakota State leads Montana State 14-6. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
Bobcats need your support to go for the win. Donate to the Bobcat Club's Three to Win campaign to help us reach our $3 million goal supporting student athletes. Before South Dakota State takes over at their own 20 yard line, let's pause 10 seconds for our network station identification. This is Bobcat Football. Montana State trails 14 to six against South Dakota State in a rematch of the semifinals from a year ago with the Cats winning at home. 10-17 to go in the second quarter. South Dakota State has moved the football at will through their first two drives of the game and now they take over at their own 20 yard line after getting their first stop defensively on the last drive. Here's the snap to Gradowski. He runs left on a design keeper. He's got space, gets the first down marker, and finally tackled from behind by Jeffrey Manning Jr. up at the 36-yard line. Yeah, we've seen that same play. There's nothing fancy to it. They end up pulling one guard, and uh, it's it's quarterback run game, and that, that it's plus one, and that's what we see from Tommy Malott so much. But there's still a guy short there. They're going to have to look at how they want to fit that because right now they're a little bit too late to the party. First and 10, up to the 36 yard line. Pistol formation, one receiver to the right. Johnson the halfback. From the left, hash mark. Here's the snap, Gradowski holds on to it on a play action, fires to Johnson, the running back over the middle. He makes the catch and is on the move across the 50 yard line and stood up shy of the 40 into Montana State territory and another big gashing play, two huge gainers for South Dakota State. Yeah, play action there and then Johnson just leaks out over the uh, the center. He, I mean, he's a, uh, a running back, so he comes out of the backfield, finds a little bit of a seam over the right over the center and just makes his uh, numbers visible. Gronowski just delivers a pretty simple ball. Pretty big shot there by Ty Okada. Just over nine minutes to go in the second quarter. Cats down 14 to six. South Dakota State is driving from the right hash mark. Gronowski, the quarterback in a pistol formation. Isaiah Davis is in the backfield. Here's the snap, they give it to Davis. He runs through the line on the left side, breaks one tackle, cuts back right, angling to the numbers on the right side. Davis into the end zone for a touchdown. A 41-yard touchdown run by Isaiah Davis, and South Dakota State is up 20-6 to with 8.47 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, Ty Okada's down there about midfield. He was the man on the scene trying to tackle Davis. He's struggled with shoulder injuries in the past. Hope he's okay. It will line up a point after here as Ty Okada is still down on a knee by the 30 yard line. Bozeman Health injury timeout as he's getting taken a look at. And uh, hopefully Okada is okay. He is on his feet now and jogging up to meet the crew, but he's gotta go off. He's gotta get off here. He's, he was down, so he will head off the field and uh, a PAT is due up here for South Dakota State after Isaiah Davis, who uh, only played sparingly in that game last year back in Bozeman. Pierre Strong was the leading rusher. Oh, taking a look at this touchdown. Well, not sure what they're reviewing on that touchdown. It seemed pretty straightforward. Unless he dropped that ball right before the goal line, although I didn't really notice that. Dan, any indication or idea of what they're going to look at on this touchdown? No, I really don't. I, I, he uh, he never even touched the ground that that I thought you know or, or was tripped or tackled at all. He was almost got through clean. Right. Well, taking a look at the replay here. Yeah, they're trying to see if he dropped that football before he got across that goal line. Because he did drop it right as he got to the end zone. Yeah, I think I think he was in. It looks like he was in, but that is what they're looking at. That's really close, though. Boy, you got to be so careful with that. That's happened before where guys have dropped that football before they got into the end zone. It's close. I think it's good, but it's not 100%. They're going to take a, a deeper look at this thing. Join Champs New Kids Club presented by Billings Clinic Bozeman. Your $25 membership fee gets you game tickets, Bobcat gear, and more. Sign up today at msubobcats.com slash champs kids club. They're showing the uh, replay on the big, beautiful video board to our right that's kind of housed by something that looks like brick, although it's actually the speakers, so it's really well done over to our right. Stadium that was uh, revamped and built up in 2016. Really a, a beautiful, beautiful place to be a part of a football game, but 
Not so much on the scoreboard right now. The Cats down 20 to 6. On the field stands is a touchdown. Stands not confirmed, so they felt like that was pretty close. So the PAT is due up here now. Montana State scored on their first drive of the game, but missed the point after. And now South Dakota State, three touches, three possessions, three touchdowns. Lining up the PAT now from left to right. Waiting the snap. Here it is, right on the money. This kick is up, and that kick is good. 8.47 to go in the first half. Montana State trailing 21-6. to We'll take a break. This is Bobcat Football from Learfield. Bitterly cold Bluebird Day in Brookings, South Dakota. Montana State trailing 21-6 to against South Dakota State with 8.47 to go in the second quarter of the semifinals of the FCS playoffs. Did you know that Mountain Hot Tub was voted Hot Tub Dealer of the Year for the best service after the sale since 1979? Visit hot, the Mountain Hot Tub at Goochill and Huffon. South Dakota State will kick it away from left to right. There is some sun peeking through kind of from the right corner of the stadium. So the Cats' sideline is in the sun. South Dakota State is in the shade on the near side. And the football has fallen off the uh, off the tee once again. Uh, they'll get that lined up one more time. Montana State with 8.47 to go in this half. will have plenty of time to, to build a, a drive here. But so far, it has been all South Dakota State. They have already put up 150 rushing yards. Montana State just 29 rushing yards. Right now, it's really been Tommy Malott, four for four through the air with 80 passing yards to this point. And now uh, South Dakota State will have uh, a man, Daly's Beanham, hold this football on the tee. Dustman ready to kick it away from left to right. The right-footed kick is in the air. Toward the 10-yard line, Marquis Johnson makes the catch in the middle of the field. Johnson angling left, still between the hash, turns up field on the left hash, breaks one tackle, slips past another, across the 40 and down at the 45-yard line. Marquis Johnson sets up the caps, caps in prime territory. Yeah, nice return, really good job by that kickoff return unit. Big field position here, that was a nice return. Bobcat Nation, Toyota has created a rewards program specifically for you. As part of the Toyota Rewards Program, you can win exclusive swag throughout the year along with receiving a premium giveaway in the mail each time you bring your vehicle in to be serviced at your local Montana Toyota dealers. Still no Sean Chambers since that first drive. He's been limping around the sidelines today. Isaiah Fonse is back there along with Tommy Mallott. Three receivers spread out to the right side. Dowler, Patterson, and Alston. Now Dowler in motion from right to left. Here's the snap. They hand it off to Afonse, and he is tackled right away at the line of scrimmage by Adam Bach, his second game back from injury, and he looks like he is all the way back. Yeah, and he's having such a quick trigger, which I think is the key today. He's not waiting a lot. You can see him really pulling the trigger and getting downhill. 
and being the, the hammer, not the nail here. And it's not giving Isaiah Fonse a whole lot of time to make a cut or a move when given the opportunity. No gain, second and 10 from the 45 yard line. Cats in their own territory in a shotgun formation. Fonse in the backfield, here's the snap. The lot keeps it, he runs left, cuts up the middle, and hit as he gets across the line of scrimmage following a four yard gain. That'll be third and six from the 49 yard line. Yeah, quarterback keeper had a pulling guard there as well. Isaiah uh, Afonso was a little bit of a decoy. But they're closing pretty fast. They're being really physical up front, doing a good job of setting the edges. Not a whole lot of running creases for this Bobcat O. Cats are two for four on third down so far. They did score their touchdown on a fourth down rush from Sean Chambers, who's not been in the game since. Two receivers left, three to the right on third and six. Tommy Malott in the empty backfield takes the shotgun snap, looking to throw. He's under pressure, slips off one man, can't slip off the other. He is sacked, shy of the original line of scrimmage. Fourth down coming up, and Montana State will have to punt. Yeah, interesting there, an, an empty. Um, uh, it hasn't been up. an overly productive set for the Bobcat O all year. I like to get to it, but an interesting third down call there. And they brought pressure. Tommy unable to escape. They force a four, a four of the punt here. Tough third downs for this Bobcat O early on. Sanders and Winkleman, who have a combined 40 plus career sacks, teamed up on that one. Here's the snap from Sullivan. Layton puts this punt in the air. Fair catch called for. It lands at the 25, takes a Bobcats bounce toward the 15 yard line and rolls to a stop at the 14 yard line. And now a couple of pushes and shoves on both sides. A couple of the Jackrabbits started sticking their head in there and a couple of the white jerseys started shoving people away. 6.18 to go in the first half. We're heading to a timeout. Montana State trailing 21 to six. South Dakota State has the football after we get back from this break. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. At Montana State University in Bozeman, we like to think outside, but not just because we have access to some of the best outdoor recreation on the planet. We like to think outside because we are creators, researchers, artists, and thinkers, breaking boundaries in over 250 fields. Montana State University, mountains and mines. 6.18 to go in the second quarter. Montana State trailing 21 to six against South Dakota State. Dan Davies down on the sideline. Dan, this offense for Montana State right now just does not have any rhythm at this moment. Yeah, really, really struggling offensively to run the football and uh, just not being able to get that footing. But South Dakota State has uh, really had success running the football and uh, see what adjustments we're going to make. We'll visit with Coach uh, Vigan here at halftime. Yeah, <clears throat> when you look at these two offenses, I think from the naked eye, you look at them and you think that they're they're very similar offensively and, and truly they, they're they're a little bit different. I mean, fundamentally different, especially this year. Uh, Montana State utilizes a wide zone scheme or an outside zone scheme. They have an, uh, an undersized offensive line that really likes to use athleticism and work laterally. 
Um, and and uh, South Dakota State is doing the opposite. They're going to work within the tackles. They're going to have a lot of pulling guards and uh, work within the tackles and get downhill more than they will try and get lateral. And so it's interesting, but uh, you can see that just the, the lateral movement and the athleticism by uh, by Montana State's offensive front is not really being captured or utilized and credit to the South Dakota State defense. Bozeman Health doesn't want you to have an injury timeout. A primary care provider helps keep you healthy and in the game. Visit bozemanhealth.org today to find a primary care provider in Belgrade, Big Sky, or Bozeman. Your care is our purpose. Huge drive, 6-18 to go in the first half. South Dakota State has scored three touchdowns on three possessions, up 21-6. First snap of this drive. Gronowski keeps it. He runs left, sheds one man, carries the pile forward, up near the 25, give him the 24-yard line, one yard shy of the first down mark. Yeah, going to the quarterback run game. Again, they've had success early on with that, just QB plus one. So really, uh, you got a, a tailback back there that is going to be a blocker, and uh, the, and then the tailback becomes technically the quarterback in that situation, and able to get a nice push, physical offensive front. That's a big chunk play, bringing up second and one, one of those waist downs that we talk about all season long. Pistol formation, two receivers to the right. Here's the snap. They hand it off. The running back, Davis, hits the line of scrimmage, has nowhere to go. And oh, he did get the yard, it looks like, up to the 25 to get him the first down. Boy, nice job by the Cats that time, but Isaiah Davis found a way to shove that football forward by three feet. Yeah, and good job, Sebastian Valdez on the interior defensive front, kind of resetting the line of scrimmage there and bubbling that offensive line back just a touch, and that forced Isaiah da Davis to retrace and pick another lane, but still was able to gain that one yard to move the chains. First and 10 from their own 25 yard line for the Jackrabbits. Shotgun formation, two receivers right, one half back. Man in motion, here's the snap. Gronowski keeps it, looking to throw. Fires down the left sideline. That is caught, and he is inbounds. It was the tight end, Tucker Kraft, who made an acrobatic catch right on that left sideline, and a big first down for South Dakota State. Yeah, uh, Callahan O'Reilly was in coverage there, and Kraft ran a wheel route. I think he started by a little a little flat route. Callahan O'Reilly was all over it, took a peek to see if that ball might be coming. And by that time, Kraft had wheeled it up the sideline. And Gronowski delivers a nice ball. First and 10 up to the 44. South Dakota State still in their own territory, but they are having whatever they want against this catch defense. Here's the snap. Gronowski runs left, and he is mad at the line of scrimmage that time. Upended quickly, but still able to fall forward. And you can give him another almost four or five yards, so it'll be second and manageable. Yeah, and better run fits there. Callahan O'Reilly does a nice job of squeezing that, that pulling lineman. It leaves Danny Ulia Keppa free coming downhill one-on-one -on, -one on Gronowski, but too much yardage there on first down. Second and six, officially a four-yard gain up to the 48-yard line. South Dakota State still in their territory with 3.50 to go in the first half. They're going to try to... Uh, take down this clock. They're gonna try to finish this first half with the football in the end zone. Catch down 21 to six. From the left hash mark in a pistol formation. Here's the snap, they hand it off to Johnson. He runs up the middle and able to dive through, shy of the first down marker. He's one yard shy, a five yard gain. Looked like they had it bottled up, but he still slithered through. Yeah, they seem to, to have decent run fits there, but just a little bit late to the party. That big offensive front for South Dakota State. Pull in, those guards specifically are very athletic. They play with great technique. They're really aggressive. They've done a good job when they've had the opportunity to pull and get onto that defensive front. We got two All-Americans on that line this year. Here's the snap, they hand it off. Johnson runs left and they got him right at the line of scrimmage. I think he's short on the left hash mark and that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, huge stop there. Good to see James Campbell getting in on the action, pulling the trigger from his corner position, and that's a big, big target there in Isaiah Davis. Fourth and one here, South Dakota State's gonna go for it. Yeah, no doubt. From the 47-yard line in plus territory for the Jackrabbits, the clock winding down at the 2.30 mark of the first half. Montana State down 21 to six, trying to get a big fourth down stop. They're in a pistol formation here. 
Tight end in motion. He gets under center. Kraft takes the snap, trying to move the pile forward, and he does. It was the tight end, Tucker Kraft, who came over, got under center, took the snap, and the tight end sneak converts that fourth down, and uh, South Dakota State continues on to the 44-yard line. Yeah, pretty risky business. Not very often are you wanting your tight end to take snaps under center. Shoot some some quarterbacks don't feel comfortable taking <laughs> snaps under center these days as much as the game has gone to shotgun, but pretty good innovation there, moving the chains. This Bobcat D still got plenty of time here to try and uh, get off the field. I can feel them just bowing their neck just a little bit more. Well, Jackrabbits have used that play before with Kraft. Here's the shotgun snap. They hand it off to Isaiah Davis. He hits the line of scrimmage, trying to power through, and he gets popped at the 40 uh, make it the 37-yard line, 38-yard line. Ty Okada is still in there. He jumped into that, that fray. He had gone down and uh, looked a little banged up earlier, but he is in there. So uh, second down coming up for South Dakota State. Second and four. They get those offensive linemen for South Dakota State pulling. They've had a lot of pullers today, which, again, just exchanges gaps. You're having now more gaps on one side of the football than the other. You've got to match those pullers on defense. Montana State has done a decent job, but when it comes time to tackle, they've struggled. Pistol snap on second down. They give it to Johnson. He runs up the middle. He's broken it open. Angling down the right sideline toward the pylon. Amar Johnson into the end zone. Touchdown. 38 yards out from Amar Johnson. And South Dakota State has scored four touchdowns on their first four drives. Yeah. <clears throat> another, another play there with a the pulling guard and just not well fit, not well fit, not playing that same defense that we saw here the last three games where they've done so well against the run. They've just struggled and struggled, especially at the point of contact. Almost identical to the run that uh, Isaiah Davis had and now over 200 yards on the ground from South Dakota State. The PAT is up and good and Montana State in a deep hole. We got a timeout. 103 to go in the first half. Montana State trailing 28 to 6 against South Dakota State. We'll take a break back after this timeout. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Would you like to be able to listen to us while synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Go to SyncMyGame.com to find out how. 103 to go in the first half. Montana State will receive the kickoff here, trailing 28 to 6 against uh, South Dakota State. Uh, Dan, uh, have you seen Sean Chambers? Where is he? He's been out since that first drive. What do you know? Yeah, Sean Chambers on the sideline in street clothes with a boot on his right foot. So I'm, his day is done today. That's a big. Big break, it's tough. Yeah, tough, especially in, in a run-oriented offense like we have at Montana State. He's just done such an incredible job this season in scoring the lone touchdown here today. So it'll be up to Malat and the rest of that running back crew to get things going. Malat's been tremendous through the air, four for four for 80 yards. 
The Cats only 28 yards on the ground, just 1.6 yards per carry. Meanwhile, South Dakota State, nine yards per carry, 216 yards. Isaiah Davis, 112 yards on 10 carries today. South Dakota State will kick it away. The right-footed kick, short, little pooch kick, caught with a fair catch at the 45-yard line by Pickering. Bobcat football is presented in part by Toyota. All right. 103 to go. Montana State has all three timeouts. Let's see what they can do in the final uh, stretch of the second quarter. Yeah, it'd be nice to obviously find your way into the end zone. Plenty of time, plenty of timeouts here. And they get the ball to open the second half. So this could be a great opportunity to steal some points ahead of halftime. Elijah Elliott in at running back right now. Afonso, five carries for 14. Elijah Elliott, one carry for five so far. Malat, negative three with a couple of sacks today. Shotgun formation from the 35-yard line. Here's the snap. Malat looking to throw. Steps up, fires. Caught by Derek Snell at the 50-yard line. A little behind him over his left shoulder. Got up and hauled it in with two hands. First interstate bank, first down. Yeah, nice corner route by Derek Snell. Good job sneaking behind the, the corner. Nice ball by Tommy Malat. They may just have to try and utilize some of this throw game here to loosen up the defense. 15-yard completion. From the 50-yard line, first and 10 from the left hash mark. Snap to Malat, looking to throw, looking over the middle. Fires caught by Robbie Alston, racing up the middle of the field and wrapped up around the ankles, just shy of the 20-yard line. Robbie Alston, a heck of a catch on a slant. Yeah, slant, and then he finds a way to cross that face of the linebacker. Nice throw by Tommy Malat. 38 seconds, clock running down in the second quarter. Cats have three timeouts from the left hash mark. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Snap, Malat fires over the middle, incomplete. Just leading Alston a little bit, and it'll be second and 10. Yeah, went right back to the same route concept, trying to find Ravi Alston in a little bit of a seam or a bender behind that linebacker. Pretty tight safety. I know they are pretty tight coverage there and, and a nice play by the safety uh, uh, over the top. I know that this Montana State team feels like they can throw it when capable, especially on their safeties that maybe aren't quite as athletic as some of these receivers. We'll see if they're going to continue to test them. That was Malat's first incompletion of the day. Six for seven through the air. 28 seconds left in the second quarter. Montana State down 28-6. Here's the snap. Malat looking to throw under pressure. Shakes off one man, and he cannot shake off a second. He is tackled back at the 30. A 10-yard loss on the sack and a timeout called by Montana State. Yeah. 21 seconds left in the second. Yeah, just when you feel like you're getting some momentum, he finds a way to shake one guy loose, but uh, unable to, to make a dent in this progress here, or this momentum, rather, that South Dakota State has. This is a big possession. Luckily, they got those timeouts. Third and long here. We'll see if they're going to try and, I mean, you got 22 seconds, so, uh, you know, you're, you, you really are playing for these next two downs. You're not gonna punt it, you're not gonna do anything like that. In my opinion, I think you try and play it for, uh, really you got two plays in your in your uh, playbook right now that you feel good about trying to get these 21 yards. So it is third down and 21. Cats backed up out of the Rose Hours red zone to the 31 yard line after that sack by Cade Trevier. Four and a half sacks for Cade this year. Empty backfield, Thomas Dollar, Snell to the left, Alston and Patterson to the right. From the right, hash mark on third down to the final 30 seconds of the first half. Snap to Malat, he steps up in the pocket, fires over the middle, caught by Derek Snell, and he is tackled at the 20 yard line at the first, or uh, the original line of scrimmage. 13 seconds and then 12 left in the second quarter. Cats still have two timeouts, eight, seven, Still winding down, Vegan ready to call a timeout here, and he does now with four seconds left. And on fourth down for the 20-yard line, Montana State will try a field goal here. It'll be a 37-yard attempt from the right hash mark on a very cold, very slick day, but a chance to try to find at least some points at the end of this first half. Yeah, t tough footing here, but a capable kicker with really good length strength. We need to watch Tommy Sullivan here. He had an errant snap there on that first touchdown for the Bobcats. We'll see if he can put this thing down. Makeable kick here, despite the conditions. Town Pump, the exclusive sponsor of the exciting Brawl of the Wild, invites you to visit a Town Pump store on your way home for gas and snacks. Safe travels from Town Pump. So, from the right hash mark. Cats will line it up, and now we get a whistle. 
And a timeout called by South Dakota State. So it still will be a 37-yard attempt. Blessner gets a little extra time here to kind of kick away a little bit of that snow and make sure he's got a sure foot before this kick. Bobcat fans, when you buy Bobcat products at the MSU Bookstore, you can help lower the price of course materials for Montana State students. Shop online at Bobcat Stadium or on campus. The MSU Bookstore is your Bobcat gear headquarters. So really, in some ways, a little bit of an advantage with that uh, timeout called by South Dakota State to allow Glessner to clean up that right hash a little bit and make sure he gets a good, hardy plant on the ground. He's kicking into the wind. It's not too strong. Now the, the flags on top of the goalposts are not really moving much, but the flag on the far side is by the Cats' sideline. Here we go. Snap. Layton puts it down. Glessner puts it up. That's got the leg, and it is... Through the uprights, it is good as the first half comes to a close. Big field goal by Blake Glessner. Montana State trails 28-9 at halftime. And Dan Davies will have Brent Vegan here in just a moment as Brent gets over there now in the at the end of the first half. So a tough first half for the Cats. They trail 28-9, and now here's Dan Davies with uh, head coach Brent Vegan. Here yeah, with Coach Vegan. Uh, really struggled to uh, run the football that first half. Uh, they're doing some things you haven't seen before. Well, I don't know so much about that. I mean, we're just uh, we're putting our ourselves in a situation where we're, you know, we've had too many mistakes on offense, I think, as much as anything. But, yeah, we haven't got the running game going. Obviously, on defense, we haven't been able to stop the run. So something's got to change the second half. Uh, big kick by Blake there. we got the ball coming out. We've got to gain some momentum. All right. Good luck second half. Yeah. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Dan. Dan Davies down the sidelines with uh, head coach Brent Vegan. Uh, I'll tell you this. Th this team will not quit. No. And uh, if there's anything I know about, if I know anything about this squad in terms of their, just their tenacity, they've been through a heck of a lot. They're going to get creative here. And it may mean we're going to see more throwing of the football. Um, it may just be diverting from that initial game plan, which th this is key. This second half adjustments, uh, are, are so pivotal to any football team. And uh, South Dakota State has done a really good job in the second half in particular. They do a really good job with their adjustments. So the Cats are going to need to come up with something pretty creative here. But uh, they get the ball back first, which is awesome. You can go down and score and see some of that, that, that momentum early. Montana State down 19 at the half against South Dakota State. Not only is dairy delicious, but it also promotes health as well. Just three servings of dairy a day improves overall wellness and may reduce the risk of developing some chronic diseases. It's a quick, convenient, and economic way to make sure you are staying strong and healthy on and off the field. We'll take a break at halftime. Montana State trailing South Dakota State 28-9 in the semifinals of the FCS playoffs. We'll take a break. This is Bobcat Football from Learfield.
28 to nine against South Dakota State. The Cats defense really has had no answer to this point for this uh, South Dakota State offense. Montana State giving up 319 yards overall in that first half, including 200 plus yards on the ground. Bobcat Nation, Toyota has created a rewards program specifically for you. As part of the Toyota Rewards Program, you can win exclusive swag throughout the year, along with receiving a premium giveaway in the mail each time you bring your vehicle into be service at your local Montana Toyota dealers. To join the program, visit msubobcats.com slash Toyota Rewards to register. Toyota, proud to be a partner of Bobcat Athletics. Taking a look around at the rest of the scoreboards for Montana State, the last Big Sky team standing at this moment. There are only three teams left. North Dakota State winning against Incarnate Word last night, winning that game 35 to 32. Incarnate Word had taken a 16-0 lead after about six minutes of play, but North Dakota State came all the way back and got the win. Cam Miller, their quarterback at North Dakota State, one for 12 through the air in that victory, but he also rushed for 132 yards in that game. Lindsey Scott, the great seventh year quarterback for Incarnate Word, has bounced all over the place. He went 30 for 46 with 282 yards and a touchdown, but two interceptions, including a pick to uh, seal the end of that game last night. So North Dakota State awaiting the winner of this one for the national championship game coming up on January 8th. Montana Farm Bureau, the grassroots voice of agriculture, advocating for farmers and ranchers across our state and leading Montana toward a future with a prosperous agricultural economy and thriving rural communities. Join us at mfbf.org and go Bobcats. Take another break. Sun setting down in South Dakota. Lights have been flipped on. The sky changing colors. The field still covered in a light white dust on a bitterly cold mid-December Saturday afternoon, quickly turning to evening. Again, we'll take a break. Montana State trailing at halftime, 28 to nine. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. It's halftime of the semifinals of the FCS playoffs. Montana State trailing 28 to nine against South Dakota State. Boy, Mikey, this is a, a bit of a surprise. This Cats defense has really not slowed down South Dakota State at all today. And the Cats, with the best running game in the country, have been slowed down by the best run defense in the nation. Yeah, and, and not a lot has gone the, the, you know, the Cats ways. They have not. Uh, taking the opportunities, they, they seem to be getting out physical uh, up front. Uh, and when it comes to delivering a blow on defense and, and pulling the trigger and getting downhill, they haven't done a good job. So they've been outplayed in that first half, and there's no doubt about it. But they got the opportunity to, 
to you know wipe that slate clean a little bit here, start fresh here in the second half. They're going to have to have a little bit of a different approach. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them throwing the ball a little bit more, loosening them up. I know they feel good about their their matchups on the the. the uh, secondary of uh, South Dakota State, particularly on the safeties. So we'll see if they try and expose that a little bit, loosen up the defense, and then try and get into a little bit more of that run game. But the, the Bobcat defense has got to get some stops, whether that's through blitzing or, or uh, you know, just pulling the trigger a little bit faster. Not sure what that's going to look like, but they've got to find a way to get a little bit more momentum on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, and particularly the ground game. I mean, South Dakota State right now, has uh, rushed for 216 yards in that first half. Isaiah Davis alone, 112 over 10 carries. We're used to the Cats doing this against uh, opposing defenses, but uh, today it, it's been all South Dakota State on the defensive side. I will right, we'll take one more break, and when we get back, we'll be ready to go for the second half of play. Montana State will receive the kickoff as they try to dig out of a 19-point hole. South Dakota State 28, Montana State nine as we take a break before we get to the start of the third quarter. This is Bobcat Football from Learfield. Dominated pretty much every facet of this ball game through the first 30 minutes of action. Cats will not have Sean Chambers, who is out with an apparent injury, apparently suffered on that first drive, which he did cap with a one yard rushing touchdown, but he is back in street clothes. So it'll all fa fall back on Tommy Milan, who was the absolute force in the meeting between these two teams last season. The Bozeman Come On In Hotel and Suites is a proud sponsor of MSU Athletics and the Montana State Alumni Association. The Come On In allows you to escape the ordinary while enjoying their numerous hotel and guest room amenities. Visit comeonin.com to book your stay today. All right, Mikey. Cats are in a dark spot right now, but this is certainly a team that has faced their share of adversity. and They know how to come through. Yeah, absolutely, and they're not going to give up. This is a team that's going to continue to battle one play at a time. You're not going to, you know, get all, uh, you know, 21 points or whatever right here. 20, 20 points, 19 points right there at uh, one shot. You got to just one play at a time, chip away. Team football. 
South Dakota State to kick it away. Marquis Johnson set up in the middle of the field, the five yard line to our right. A low line drive kick that is caught by Derek Snell. He will run between the numbers on the left side, gets to the 30 yard line, carries a man forward and some big pops right around that 30 yard mark. He's up to the 32. So good uh, field position for Montana State for their first drive of the uh, second half. Let's see what they got offensively. Yeah, and curious to see, are they gonna go back to some of those empty sets? and uh, spread the ball out a little bit. Just some easy pitch and catch. Are they gonna go right back to some of the, to running the football? I think they gotta throw the football a little bit to loosen up this defense and then get back to the run game. Carrot's going into the wind a bit. It's kind of swirling some. Empty backfield, left hash mark, shotgun formation, Patterson to the left, three receivers to the right. Snell at the end of the line on the right side. Here's the shotgun snap. Malat keeps it. He runs left, slips through the line of scrimmage, jumps forward up shy of the 40-yard line. Give him a 39-yard line. That'll bring up second and short. Nice chunk play. Tommy Malat, just quarterback keeper, coming off the left side of that, that's, that line of scrimmage. That secondary closing pretty quickly. I wonder if they're going to use that against them. Seven-yard gain for Malat. They're playing pretty tight to the box. This entire Sandy, or South Dakota State defense is. Second and three. Dollar and Patterson to the left. Thomas out to the right. Afonso in the backfield. The shotgun set. Snap. Malat looking to throw. Fires in the flat on the right side. Cleveland Thomas caught it for the first down. Wrapped up right away, but the Cats have a first interstate bank. First down on another completion by Tommy Malat, who's seven or eight of eight through the air. Yeah, just a stick route, meaning an out route right there at the sticks. Good job knowing right where that first down marker is. Cleveland Thomas, nice throw by Tommy Malott. Mercury on the thermometer continuing to drop down to six degrees now as the sun sets out on the other side of the field. You can see the horizon changing colors as we turn into evening in the semifinals. First drive of the second half. First down snap, Malat keeps it. He cannot go anywhere, bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. They tried to hand it off to Taco Dollar, who was uh, in motion from right to left. And that'll bring up second and long. Yeah, tried to fake the jet sweep to Taco Dollar. And then a quarterback power on the inside. But that disruptive defensive line for South Dakota State had too much penetration. That South Dakota State defensive line's been one of the battles so far today. Second and 11, a one-yard loss on that last play. Three receivers left, one to the right, empty backfield, shotgun snap. Malat slips in the backfield, sacked. Dropped down right away. It looked like he was going to fake that quarterback keeper and then try to set up. His foot just slipped out from underneath him, and he got tackled quite quickly. Reese Winkleman with the sack. Adam Bach got in there too, maybe. Now a man for uh, South Dakota State, slow to get up, Jason Freeman, member of the all-newcomer team, one of their linebackers, getting helped up off the field to the left sideline. Third and 14 for Montana State, 13 minutes to go in the third quarter. Montana State trailing 28 to nine. This is their first possession of the second half. Their defense has not gotten a stop in this game. Thomas, Dowler, Snell spread out to the left side. Alston and Patterson to the right. Empty backfield to shotgun formation in the middle of the field from the 41-yard line. Tommy Malott pulls his hands out of the hands warmer. Awaits the snap. Here it is, chest high from Perkins. He steps up in the pocket. That th pass is swatted down. Caleb Sanders got up and got a big oven mitt on it, and Montana State will have to punt. Yeah, not the start you wanted. Looked promising there, moving the, moving the sticks. First couple plays, but those negative plays have killed us. Rice Layton will kick it away from right to left from their own 41-yard line. Somebody using one of the, uh, the railings as a noisemaker down there. <laughs> Here's the snap. This punt is away down the right hash toward the numbers at the 20-yard line and a fair catch there. Markham met at the 19. That's where South Dakota State will take over when we get back. 12.25 to go in the third quarter. Montana State trailing 28 to nine against South Dakota State. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Hey, I, hey, I got Chris Atterbury here. I might be able to chat with him for a minute if you get a second. Yeah, let's do it when we get back. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Can okay. you hear us? Yeah, in and out, just right. in and out. It's perfect walking down the stairs. You get outside, it's terrible. How's that? <laughs> okay. But yeah, we'll come to you uh, when we get back. 
I gotta stand like this. To get like the signal? No, oh, seriously. A little there field action. Ah. All right, Dan, coming back in 10 seconds. Back in five, Dan. 12.25 to go in the third quarter. Montana State trailing 28 to nine against South Dakota State. Dan Davies is on the sidelines with a familiar voice. Yeah, I've got Chris Atterbury, former voice of the Bobcats here. Drove over from Minneapolis. Chris, it's great to have you here. Oh, it's great to see you double. I wish the Bobcat defense get a little uh, stop here, maybe give us a little energy. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, so you're still with the Minnesota Twins. Uh, tell us about that. 16 years and, and going here, and uh, hopefully we can get back to our winning ways this summer. But still a Bobcat season ticket holder. Made it out for Weber round one this year. And wasn't going to miss this, even though it was a white knuckler getting over here. All right, great. Chris, thanks for uh, joining us here. And uh, back up to you guys. On the first snap, a throw over the middle. Jackson Yankee makes the catch and a long run into plus territory up to the 45 yard line. Yeah, oh, man. use of creativity there. Really looked at like a little bit of a dose of Montana State medicine. They faked the quarterback power that they've been running over and over again. That's that entire defensive unit of Montana State was fooled. They act like they're going to come up and stop the run. And Yankee sneaks behind the secondary there. Pretty easy pitch and catch. From the left hash mark in a pistol formation with two wide receivers to the right. Man in motion into the backfield as a fullback. Here's the snap. They hand it off. Isaiah Davis runs left, gets to the line of scrimmage, bounces off a man, gets to the outside, and he shoved out of bounds with the first down marker. Give him the first down up to the 30-yard line. Two plays to go from their own 20 to the Cats 30. Yeah, another big chunk play. Getting out on the edge. And what they're trying to do is make those corners who are the edge of the defense right now, they're really right there at the point of contact, at the point of attack, and it's a tough thing to set the edge if you're a corner. Still pulling a lot of guards, and they're just getting on that second level and mauling the defenders of Montana State. Pair of backs flanking the quarterback, Mark Granowski in the shotgun formation. One receiver left, one to the right from the 30-yard line. First down snap, hands it off. Davis deep in the backfield. Now he throws back the other way. That is dropped by the quarterback, Granowski. So they hand it off to Davis, who from the right hash mark fired back over the numbers on the left side, and it's incomplete second and 10. Yeah, fortunate break there. Pretty good job of snuffing that out. Ben Seymour was, was closer than I thought. Uh, he would be, but he, he kind of smelt that a little bit. Good job getting in the passing window. That would have been a tough throw, tough catch. The Jackrabbits are using some trickery here early on in the second half. They're trying to put this game away. They've scored on all four offensive possessions. This one is their first of the second half. 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Montana State down 28 to nine. Pistol formation, two wide receivers to the right. Here's the snap, they hand it off to Davis. He runs right, hits the line of scrimmage, and tackled. Shy of the 25. So it'll be third down, coming up, give him a two yard gain. So nice job by the Cats defense that time. Yeah, better run fits there. Pretty good job at the point of attack. I like these backers getting downhill. That was a better rep. Make it a three yard gain, so it'll be third and seven, up to the 27 yard line. And now, this is an absolutely colossal third down. This is a bit of a stretch for a field goal attempt for the day that we're having and what the uh, the kicker Hunter Dustman has in his leg for South Dakota State. So third and seven. Cats trying to get their first stop of the day. Shotgun formation. Three receivers left, one to the right. Here's the snap. Kurnowski looking to throw. He fires to the right side. Caught on a knee for a first down by Jackson Yonke on the right hash mark outside the numbers. Yeah, just a hitch route there. 
Samian Woodard in coverage. You can see him trying to plant his feet, get under control there, but just a little bit on ice skates. Nothing fancy. That was a simple turnaround hitch pattern. Get into the sticks. They move the chains. Jackson Yonke, who's got over 700 yards receiving this season, approaching 3,000 career receiving yards at South Dakota State. Pistol formation from the right hash mark, first and 10 into the red zone at the 17-yard line. Davis steps up in the shotgun formation now. Here's the snap. They pitch it to the tight end, moving to his right, and uh, Tucker Kraft able to get up to the 10-yard line. So they faked the handoff. Kraft came over, motioning from left to right. They pitched it to him, and he was on the move and tackled near the numbers on the right side of the 10-yard line. Yeah, faking that to Isaiah Davis on the outside, and then just a little shovel right in there to the belly of Tucker Kraft. He's a big athletic tight end. I know they're talking about him. He's been beat up some this season, but uh, potential high draft pick. They're talking like in the top, you know, one to, or top like three rounds, four rounds, somewhere in there. Big, capable target. Missed uh, the first six games of the season after getting hurt in the season opener. And now Ty Okada jumps off sides on the left side. And flags are on the turf. Waiting for the call. Call side. Defense, number seven. Five yard penalty, results in a first down. So that'll move the football all the way up to the five yard line, first and goal to go for South Dakota State, leading 28 to nine with nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Montana State's been able to score with the best of them throughout the season. The defense had been a bit of the Achilles heel early in the year, but they really seem to stiffen up lately, and now they have been on their heels since the first play of the game. First and goal to go from the five. Shotgun formation. Two halfbacks. Here's the snap. Gronowski looking to throw. Fires in the flat. Caught by Johnson. Touchdown. From five yards out, Gronowski to Amar Johnson, and South Dakota State scores a touchdown in their first five drives of the game. They're up. 34 to 9 with 839 to go in the third quarter and a PAT coming up. Yeah, they end up leaking Johnson out into the flat. And nobody matched him. He was un really just a un unaccounted for from what it looked like. Just ran right into the flat. Pretty easy throw for Gronowski. South Dakota State on their longest winning streak in program history at 12 games. They lost a defensive battle against Iowa to open the year. They've won 12 straight to get to this point, eyeing a 13th consecutive win as they lead 34-9 in the semifinals of the FCS playoffs. They're going to go for two here. Gronowski under center. Three receivers left, two to the right. Here's the snap. They fire, caught in the flat on the left side, and he's in. Jaden Yonke able to dive into the end zone. They complete the two-point conversion, and Montana State trails. 36 to 9 with 839 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a break. This is Bobcat Football from Learfield.
nutrient-rich product. It contains 13 essential nutrients from vitamin A to zinc, all of which are important for a healthy immune system and overall wellness. It's 13 nutrients with seemingly endless benefits. Reach for milk and make every sip count. Montana State trailing 36 to nine against South Dakota State. Thought this was gonna be a tough matchup, but uh, Mikey, this is not what we expected from the Cats in this game. No, there's nothing else to say other than I, so unexpected. So unexpected and uh, you know, you'd think that they would find some, some creases in the run game. They haven't. They've thrown the ball surprisingly well, but not at a consistent rate like, they, like they'd need to to continue to put points on the board and, and then defensively just struggled across the board to, to really uh, hold up in the trenches and then get downhill and, and be physical at the point of attack. And so uh, pretty disappointing thus far, but they've got plenty of football left. They gotta find a way to, to just take it one rep at a time and keep fighting, which these Bobcats will. One town pump touchdown for the Cats. It was a Sean Chambers one yard touchdown rush, but it appears he is out the ball game in street close hurt on that touchdown uh, rush in the, on the first drive of the game so the cats have been w without sean since that first drive of the contest and uh, meanwhile the defense has given up five touchdowns today three rushing touchdowns two passing touchdowns uh, and uh, montana state down 36 to 9 after south dakota state got the uh, two-point conversion on their last score which was their first of the second half South Dakota State will kick it away from left to right. There have been some short kicks. Marquis Johnson's got a few chances today. He is absolutely dynamic back there as the kick returner. Here's the kickoff. The right-footed kick is short again. Marquis Johnson, no, Derek Snell at the 10-yard line makes the catch. He's on the move on the left hash mark. Moves up field, breaks a tackle, cuts back left, breaks another. He's at the 40-yard line angling to the numbers. Stiff arms a man down to the ground. Down the left sideline, Derek Snell shoves off another man, and he's up to the 25-yard line. Derek Snell, a massive gashing kick return, and Montana State is up at the 25-yard line of the Jackrabbits. Maybe that's what turns the tide. Yeah, and showing his running back uh, capabilities back in Anchorage, doing a really good job getting down the field. He looks comfortable with the football in his hands. That's a nice spark for the Bobcat Hope. And he's not even taking a blow. He's staying in there, guys. Man, what a force. What a beast. Derek Snell, the Alaskan assassin. First team all-conference this year. We'll be back next season. Cats are thinking about that, though. First and 10, 8.26 to go in the third quarter. Montana State down 36 to 9. They need a touchdown. From the left hash, here's the snap. Malott fakes the handoff. He rolls out right. He flips it out to the right side, caught by Snell. Hurdles a man and goes down inside the 20-yard line. Turns into a decent first down gain. The Cats are into the Rose Hours red zone up to the 19-yard line. Nice little play there. Ends up getting Tommy on the edge. We've seen that all season long where they have Snell into the flat, almost a little bit of a bump flat. He ends up being a, either a blocker or can turn into a receiver right there. He ends up being a receiver. Nice play, good creativity. Snell in the backfield is a halfback now in a shotgun formation with Tommy Mallott. Thomas and Dollar spread out to the left side, Pickering and uh, Patterson to the right. Here's the snap. Malott shoves off a man in the backfield, rolling out right to the right sideline, and he angles out of bounds after picking up the first down. Got himself to the 15-yard line. First interstate bank, first down for the Cats, and Tommy Malott, who's still with negative rushing yards today. Yeah, nice play there. Ends up getting blown up in the, in the middle of the offense, just a little bit able to escape one guy and gets to the edge, which the Cats have been unable to do at all, I think if, if they can get to the edge, they're able to make a, a, a cut and outrun guys with their athleticism, but they've been unable to do that. They've been bottled up the entire game. Montana State today, just 24 rushing yards. Snell is the halfback. Thomas and Dow to the left. Patterson in motion from right to left. Here's the snap. They fake the handoff to Patterson, and Tommy Mallott is wrapped up in the backfield by three Royal jerseys. And that is a one-yard loss back to the 16-yard line, second and 11. Again, you got to give credit to this defensive front. And here they go. They just shuffle in and out. There's a whole new wave of them. They've done a good job of, of winning at the line of scrimmage each and every week where we've seen those creases and where there's been a little bit of something. There just hasn't been that same daylight tonight. Now bringing the flood of the starting defensive line back in. Elijah Elliott in at halfback. Thomason Dollar to the left. Patterson to the right. He's in motion from right to left. They fake the handoff to Patterson. And Tommy Mallott is sacked again. 
at the 19-yard line. Again, it was Caleb Sanders, an All-American nose tackle with over 20 career sacks, and he gets him a lot deep in the backfield, third and 14. Six minutes to go, the clock running in the third quarter. The Cats down 36 to nine. And all he did there was just beat the center. He ended up swimming one guy, really good get off. He is one heck of a defensive tackle, Caleb Sanders. Three receivers left, two to the right, empty backfield on third and long in the Rosauer's red zone. Tommy Malott ready to go and take the snap. Here it is, chest time, Malott looking to throw, under pressure, slips up the middle of the pocket, rolling out right, takes a shot to the end zone. That is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Trayton Pickering, fourth and exceptionally long coming up for Montana State. And they'll bring the kicking unit out. Yeah, and that was a nice job of escaping, getting outside of the pocket. He puts it right on the money. That hit Trayton Pickering right square in the hands. He has got to catch that. That's a touchdown. Taking a look at that, yeah. That, I, I mean, that was right there. That's a drop. Should have been a TD. Instead, the Cats line up a field goal. 31-yard attempt. No, make it a 36-yard attempt. 36-yard attempt. Here's the snap. Leighton puts it down. Low line drive kick, and it... Splits the upright. Sullivan, Leighton, Glessner combine on another field goal. Number 24 on the season for Blake Glessner. That is a single season program record for Blake Glessner. We'll take a break. Cats do get some points, but not what they should have after a Trayton Pickering drop in the end zone. South Dakota State leads it 36 to 12 over Montana State with 529 to go in the third quarter. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. How would you like to be able to listen to us while synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Go to SyncMyGame.com to find out how. 5.29 to go in the third quarter. Montana State down 36 to 12, and they're getting ready to kick this thing away again. Montana State's defense has had zero stops to this point. South Dakota State has possessed the ball five times, and they've turned it into five touchdowns. Yeah, and it all starts up front. I keep saying it. Uh, that offensive line for South Dakota State has really gotten downhill and then they mixed in some razzle-dazzle there late. Uh, that last drive, they did a pretty good job with a couple of creative play calls and caught the Cats off guard. Kickoff is caught at the five-yard line, running uh, between the hash of the numbers on the right side, and he is tackled just across the 25-yard uh, line, give him the 26-yard line. All right, we got to see something here from the Cats defense. If they're going to find a way to come back big in this semifinal game, they have to to start getting some stops. At this point, they have not gotten one yet. All the starters are out there. Everybody's looking healthy and good to go for what we know. And we'll see if they can find a way to change some things up because South Dakota State has moved the ball at will. 394 yards overall, 231 on the ground. Isaiah Davis has 127 yards on 12 carries. He's in the backfield now in the pistol formation with two wide receivers spread out to the left side. Here's the snap. They hand it off to Davis. He runs left. And he is hit by a couple of white jerseys, but not before he picked up a healthy gain. 
all the way up to the 33 yard line. So it'll be second and short for the Jackrabbits. Yeah, and what seems like a, a, a nominal gain there, is, I mean, is seven yards. They, right. they're, they're just leaning on that Bobcat defensive front. Again, we've talked about those guards on the interior, but they are a talented, talented bunch. Evan Bernstein and uh, Mason McCormick. Mason McCormick is uh, probably their, their best offensive lineman, two-time All-American. Uh, very, very capable offensive front. Second and three. Pistol snap. Gronowski keeps it, fake the handoff, and he is picked up right away, right at the line of scrimmage. They did actually give him a yard to the 34-yard line, but a nice job of the Cats that time to at least uh, slow him down. And now third down coming up, and so a huge opportunity for Montana State. Got to find a way to get a stop yeah, down. Yeah, trying to find any momentum at all at this point and, and trying to you know, get one play at a time, but also getting off the field will be huge. See if they can't get a stop. See if they're going to stay in a base defense. Cats have pressured a little bit today. See if they're going to opt for pressure to, on this third down. Here's the snap. They hand it off. Davis runs up the middle, and he got to the first down marker and moved past it by a yard. Once again, that offensive line just pushed the entire line of scrimmage past the first down marker, and South Dakota State keeps things moving with 3.45 to go, and the clock running in the third quarter. Cats down. 36 to 12, and South Dakota State is going to chew up some clock on this drive right now. Yeah, I wouldn't suspect to see a whole lot of passing game here behind the South Dakota State offense. Gronowski's coming out of the huddle. Looks like there may be some confusion as the play clock is dwindling down. They're yeah. going to take a timeout. Yep. So they'll use the timeout as the play clock winds down. So. There's the whistle, there's a timeout. And we will keep it here. Dan Davies is down on the sidelines. Dan, what are you seeing? What can the Cats do on the defensive side to get their first stop today? Well, I mean, they, they've had moments of, uh, you know, positive things happen on defense here. Again, I, it's really hard to explain how much better the footing has been for South Dakota State. They seem to be taking maybe smaller steps and kind of tiptoeing in there till they see a little seam and then try to shoot through it. But uh, the Bobcat defense has really had trouble, uh, you know, neutralizing at least that line of scrimmage momentarily. They've just been kind of getting on their heels here most of this football game. South Dakota State, eight and a half rushing yards per attempt. 28 carries as a team for 242 yards. First and 10, South Dakota State with a football. Just over three minutes to go in the third quarter. South Dakota State leading 36 to 12. Pistol formation, one receiver spread out right. Here's the snap, fakes the handoff. Gronowski rolling out to his left, gets to the line of scrimmage. He is bear hug. Sebastian Valdez grabbed him. Still got carried a little bit forward. And that turned into a decent gain of four or five yards. Yeah, Ken, that's a perfect example. If you got a guy dead to rights, Brody Greavy, over pursues just a touch and Sebastian Valdez is there to clean him up but rather than getting the guy down he falls forward which is just a myth Sebastian Valdez is a big big human a lot bigger than than Gronowski but still <laughs> able to fall forward for five yards so it makes it second and five 230 to go in the third quarter clock running with the Cats down 36 to 12 in the semifinals of the FCS playoffs here's the pistol snap Hands it off to Johnson, running right, and he's bottled up in the backfield. Ooh, is that ball loose? No. Just saw some guys diving in there, but nice job by the Cats. Daniel Louis Lakepa was in on the stop along with Brody Grieving and a few others. So that looked a whole lot different than what we've seen. That was a lot more of a, a physical set of the edge. They had a couple pulling linemen, but we matched it very quickly, and they got downhill to the point of attack. And they're not letting this, that uh, running back get a, a head full of steam and get some momentum. That was a nice play there by the Bobcat D. Third and six, another big third down opportunity. South Dakota State four for five on third downs today. Shotgun snap. Gronowski has it, and he's taken down to the backfield. Danny Louie Lakepa got him deep behind the line of scrimmage, and the Cats' defense has their first defensive stop of the day. Yeah, and that's something to celebrate. Really good job by that defense getting off the field late in the game here. You're just trying to find a little bit of momentum. I like that. 
There you go, first stop, fourth and six, and they will punt. With about 75 seconds left in the third quarter, they can bring this thing down below a minute to go in the third. But the Cats still with a glimmer of light despite the dark night sky and the lights in full effect. Now the semifinals of the playoffs out in Brookings, South Dakota. Here's the snap. Right-footed kick is up. Taco Dollar lets it bounce to the 30, catches it on a hop. He runs right to the right hash mark, turns up field at the numbers, down the right sideline. Taco Dollar tripped up shy of the 50. Taco Dollar, man. That young man is electric every time he gets his hands on the ball. Yeah, good job getting into the into the blocking scheme there. He got to the outside, tried to create a little bit of a wall, and uh, sure-footed. He gets exciting when he puts that foot in the ground. He's an electric guy with the ball in his hands. Interwest Moving and Storage is the official moving company of the MSU Bobcats. All right, Montana State has one town pump touchdown today. That was on their first drive of the game. They missed the PAT and have kicked two field goals since. They're down 36 to 12 with under a minute to go in the third quarter. Trying to keep the season alive. Shotgun formation. Two receivers left, one to the right of Fonse in the backfield. Here's the snap. Rolling out to his left for a pitch. Gives it to Afonso. Turns up field the numbers and undercut as he approaches the 45 yard line. Big hearty gain. Tommy Malott a little slow to get up. He got hit heavily. And it'll be second down and short for the Cats. Yeah, they got to the speed option look, got on the edge. Tommy Mallott doing a really good job, working to his left, stringing out that defense. He pitches it late in the sequence, but he takes a big shot. So does Isaiah Fonse. But nice hardy gain there on first down. All clean, hardy hits. Second and four. 15 seconds left and counting in the third quarter. Cats down 36 to 12. Mallott steps up to the line of scrimmage. Points out the coverage. Gets ready to go again on the left hash mark. Here's the shotgun snap. Malat looking to throw. Fires into the flat on the right side. Incomplete. Looking for Robbie Alston. Third down coming up. Clock hits zeros. And it looks like we will head to the fourth quarter. Let's just double check. I think they got down to zero. Yep, and there's the official word. So that's the end of the third quarter. Montana State facing third down when we come back. Montana State down 36 to 12 in the semifinals of the FCS playoffs against South Dakota State. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Back in Brookings, Montana State trailing 36 to 12 against South Dakota State. Quick peek at the town pump stats. After three quarters of play, Montana State 174 total yards, only 26 rushing yards today. South Dakota State 400 plus 245 on the ground. Mikey, the conversation all week, best rushing offense against the best rushing defense, and South Dakota State's rushing defense has won to this point. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about that. Uh, it's that interior defensive line that I've been so impressed with, getting off the football. Uh, and, and Montana State is a little bit undersized, I would say, on the offensive line, which is okay. We've been able to utilize our wide zone scheme and getting guys on the move, working lateral. 
capitalizing on the, the athleticism, but today it's just been neutralized, and you got to credit their defensive front. Olsen Coors, Mountain Cold Refreshment, made to chill. 2022 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, celebrate responsibly. Montana State across the 50, up to the 47-yard line in Jackrabbit territory. They trail 36-12 to as we begin the fourth quarter. And Montana State trying to convert on third and four. Set up on the left hash mark. Three receivers right, one to the left. Empty backfield, here's the snap. Malad keeps it, he runs right, hit in the backfield by one man and driven back by a second. And that'll bring up fourth and long. South Dakota State's defensive line has been an absolute force today. Yeah, and, and there again is Caleb Sanders. He absolutely blew up that play right from the beginning. Really good get off. And that's a third and manageable. And, and typically these downs have been ones where the, the Cats have been able to impose their will on guys and, and move the chains, but that has not been the case today. Caleb Sanders, 6'1", 270, a senior and an All-American in the middle of that defensive line. Montana State will kick it away again. Tommy Malott, negative 14 rushing yards today. And it's a fake, they snap it, pitch it to Dollar, and he is bottled up at the 50. So they snapped it to one of the up backs, he pitched it to Taco Dollar, and Taco Dollar was wrapped up at the 49 yard line, and that's where South Dakota State will take over. I appreciate the creativity. I, I like the call there. I mean, you're, you're down, which, yeah, you're down 36 to 12. And I, I appreciate the creativity. Thought maybe he was going to be able to get to the edge, but he got snuffed out. South Dakota State's just been so disciplined and responsibly defensively. They seem, seemingly have somebody in every spot. There's just nowhere to go. Yeah, and sometimes you're playing with your hair on fire and, and you just have so much momentum. It just seems that nothing can go wrong, and it seems to be the case tonight. Pistol formation from their own 49-yard line on the first play of this drive. Here's the snap. Fakes the handoff. Gronowski looking to throw down the left sideline. That is caught. Jackson Yonke, one of the great receivers in program history, the senior, making the catch up the 25-yard line, calling for some more applause as he gets back into the huddle. Yeah, really tight coverage, too. James Campbell, hip to hip, in phase, as they call it. Had nice coverage, just got his eyes back, unable to find a way to get the ball on the ground. During the football season, you can enjoy Cat Chat, the official radio show of head coach Brett Vegan and Bobcat Athletics over beer and wings every Wednesdays at Buffalo Wild Wings. 13.30 to go in the game, catch down 36 to 12. Pistol formation, two receivers to the right on the left hash mark on first down at the 25. Snap. Hands it off to Davis. He runs right. He's through the line of scrimmage. Isaiah Davis into the second level. Tripped up inside the 10-yard line. Isaiah Davis, as big and strong as he was pitched to us all season long. And for South Dakota State, they're starting to feel like they're on the cusp of a celebration up 36-12 early in the fourth. Isaiah Davis approaching 3,000 career yards. Came in with 30 career touchdowns. Third year junior. First team all conference this year. Set up in the pistol formation. First and goal to go from the six. Snap to Kronowski, looking to throw. Fires to the right side, swatted away. Ty Okada got there and spiked it into the ground, reaching around Tucker Kraft, second and goal. Good effort by Ty Okada covering the bigger tight ends. Boy, you can really see Tucker Kraft's size. Yeah, he, he is a big, big target. And again, we've, we've mentioned it. I think the, the draft experts expect to be him to be taken off the board fairly early. He's yes. a Dallas Goddard type, right? I mean, who's been so successful at the next level as well. Six catches for 96 yards in the meeting last year. Here's the snap. They hand it off. Davis runs up the middle. Bottled up. Sebastian Valdez and Callahan O'Reilly able to catch him. And that'll bring up third and goal from about the four-yard line. At First Interstate, it's all about supporting our communities and cheering on our teams. Thank you for letting us be your trusted community bank for more than 50 years. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Member FDIC. Clock continuing to wind. South Dakota State. 
can chew up that clock with the best of them. They have been tremendous in terms of time of possession throughout the entire season. It's actually been pretty even today for the most part, but throughout the year, they are a team that as soon as they get a lead, they will just hold on to that clock. Third and goal to go from the four. Pistol formation again, the snap. Fakes the handoff, Gronowski rolling out right, under pressure against Greeby, slips one man, now fires out of the back of the end zone after Callahan O'Reilly was giving him chase as well, and that'll bring up fourth down. Nice job by the Cats, they get a stand inside the 10 yard line, and they will force at least a field goal. Yeah, really good job fighting, scratching and clawing just to try and get in any momentum. They gave up some long shots there, some chunk plays, but really good job to battle back and force a field goal. So this uh, coming up now, this uh, short field goal, although kind of an awkward angle from that left hash mark, be about a 20, make it a 21 yarder. It's a 21 yarder for uh, Hunter Dustman, who is perfect under 20 yards. Here's the snap, the hold is down, this kick is up, and that kick is good. That'll take us to a timeout. Montana State just getting no traction today. They're down 39 to 12 against South Dakota State with 11.40 to go in the ball game. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Back up at the first Interstate Bank broadcast booth. Montana State trailing it 39-12 to against South Dakota State. Montana's Ribbon Chop House has been serving Rocky Mountain communities for over 20 years. Our ability to grow has come through our commitment to Rocky Mountain Hospitality, a concept which incorporates a casual attitude with our commitment to loyalty, safety, service, and quality food. We hope you'll be our guest at one of our Montana locations soon. South Dakota State will kick it away from right to left. So the Montana State defense gave up five touchdowns on the first five Jackrabbits possessions, but since then, one stop and then held them to one field goal after a fake punt attempt by Montana State, something we really haven't seen from them all year. They haven't really been in a position where they've needed that. Yeah, I, I think I, I like the call, just yeah. staying aggressive. But, you know, you on one, on one hand, you like the call. On the other hand, you're like, well, would you maybe like your opportunity to, to line up uh, – and get your best offensive play called, who knows. Here's the kickoff from right to left. Derek Snell makes the catch of the numbers on the left side. He's angling toward the left sideline and he is tackled out of bounds, shy of the 35. And Montana State will take over on offense. They got one touchdown on their opening drive of the day and now the clock getting late with 11.36 to go. The Cats down 39 to 12. Well, there's still a lot of talent on this team. This is not a one-hit wonder by any means, but certainly a disappointing showing for the Cats, who have just had no answer really on either side. This game's been completely controlled by the Jackrabbits today. Three receivers right, one to the left, and a shotgun formation. One halfback next to Tommy Malott. Snap. Malott looking to throw. Fires to the right side through the hands of a leaping Willie Patterson. He was wide open, and it was too high, and it got between both of his hands. Yeah, and that's a long throw. It's just a simple hitch route. 
Probably about seven to eight yards deep, but that's a long throw for Tommy. It just sails on him just a touch. Setting up again, second and 10. From the left hash mark at their own 34 yard line. Three receivers right, or one to the left. Elijah Elliott in the backfield. Snap, Malat fires over the middle, caught by Taco Dollar, and he slides down across the first down marker at the 44 yard line. First Interstate Bank first down, nice job by Taco Dollar. Good job by Tommy Malat. They brought six there, four up front, and then a, a gut cross blitz it looked like, and he was untouched. But Tommy stands in there, delivers that slant route to Taco. A lot, 10 for 15, 148 yards today. Three receivers right, one to the left. Elliott still in the backfield along with Mallott. Snap, Mallott looking to throw, steps up in the pocket, and he is tackled as he pushed it forward by two or three yards. Had some time on that one, but couldn't get anything off good coverage downfield by the Jackrabbits. Got one offensive lineman down there, but he he popped back up. Yeah, Omar Abedion's going to come on in. Looked like uh, JT Reed was hobbling a little bit there, so Omar comes in to spell him. Second and eight. Cats at their own 46-yard line. Ten and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Montana State down 39-12. to 12. Shotgun snap to Malat, Looking to throw. Under pressure. Fires. Incomplete. He got hit as he delivered, short to uh, Willie Patterson. Malat slow to get up. He got crushed, clean hit right into the rib cage, but he is slow getting up and hobbled. Sean Chambers already out of this game with an injury from earlier on the first drive. Yeah, he's taking quite a few shots. That was a big one. Still got a third and, third and long here, third and seven it looks like, third and eight. Let's see if they can't move the chains. Malat, as tough as they come, Right back in there. Five receivers, three right, two to the left. Empty backfield on third and eight. Shotgun snap. A lot looking to throw. Fires down the seam. Caught by Cleveland Thomas in the left hash mark. And he is down shy of the 35 for another first interstate bank first down. Yeah, nice throw. Really great catch on a dig route there by Cleveland Thomas. He runs about 12 yards down and a square in. Really good catch in traffic. Put it right in between a couple defenders. Nice ball there by Tommy Mallott. Four catches for 74 yards for Cleveland Thomas Jr., who will be back next year. Two receivers right, one to the left. Shotgun snap. Mallott on first down, looking to throw. Fires. That is incomplete. Boy, Pickering had a hand on it, but he was also mauled by two defenders. Looked clean, but good, good coverage downfield. Second down. Yeah, if he would have waited just a touch, Cleveland Thomas was really the third man into the zone. It was just a flood concept, meaning they were flooding the outside third, somebody in the flat, somebody intermediate, and then somebody deep. I think Cleveland Thomas might have been coming a little bit open there late. Agreed. Afonso back in there. Six carries for 20 yards from Isaiah Afonso today. One receiver left. Three to the right. In the middle of the field on second and 10, 37-yard line in plus territory, 9.43 to go in the game. Montana State down 39-12. to 12. Shotgun snap to Mallott. Looking to throw down the middle of the field. That is picked off. Intercepted in the middle of the field by Adam Bach. Cut in front of Derek Snell. And Tommy Mallott is down. And he is hurt after getting hit on that last play. He is in a heap in the backfield. And boy, you hope he's all right. Already went out with a concussion earlier this year for about a month. They're calling rough in the passer here. So this uh, interception will be taken off the board. But he is down and hurt and being helped back up to his feet now. Let's see, take a look at the replay. We gotta go to break here. Take a look at that replay. Oh yeah, it was, it was a little bit late after he delivered that throw. We'll uh, see if we get a cleaner look, but we're gonna take a timeout. 9.38 to go in the ballgame, Montana State trailing 39-12 to 12 against South Dakota State with this Bozeman Health injury timeout. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
trailing 39 to 12 with 9.38 to go in the ball game. A roughing the passer penalty has extended this drive and taken an interception off the board. It was a late hit, and he did get driven to the ground. That was a pretty easy call for the official. Serving all your garage door needs, Dortek is raising the door on quality. And uh, Malat was hurt on the play, so Sean Austin is in at quarterback for the Cats. Shotgun snap, they hand to Afonso. He runs up the middle, and he is tackled at the 15, make it the 14-yard line. So a nice gain by Isaiah Afonso. Second and short coming up for the Caps. Yeah, that might have been the, the most productive run that I've seen out of, out of this Bobcat uh, offense so far. Almost looked like it has all season long where they collapse one side of the line of scrimmage in a strong Tom run by Isaiah Afonso. Tommy back in. Yes, sir. Tommy Willott in the shotgun formation, came out clean. Elijah Elliott in the backfield. Coy Steele, Willie Patterson spread out right. Cleveland Thomas spread out left, who's having a banner day. Shotgun snap, Malott keeps it. He's under pressure, rolling out to his left, gets outside the numbers, gets to the sideline, and he's hit out of bounds. Picked up the first down, though, up at the 10-yard line. Catch of the Rose Hours red zone after that first interstate bank first down. The Cats driving here with 8.45 to go in the game, but the clock's still running. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Finds a way to wiggle out of that thing, escapes to his left, and moves the chain. Still, he still took a pretty big hit there from their nickelback, Isaiah Stallbird. He's a big boy, 6'1", 200. He, he had a, quite the collision there with Tommy on that sideline. That's looking for something. One receiver left, one to the right, empty backfield. Oversized offensive line on first and goal from the 10. Snap, Malat keeps it. He runs up the middle, cuts the numbers on the left side, heading to the left pylon. He got there. Touchdown, Montana State. Tommy Malat fighting his way into the end zone. Down and hurt again outside of the end zone near that big snow pile over there. He got the touchdown, but he continues to take a beating. Dan, uh, Tommy Malat today has just been absolutely beat up in this contest. Yeah, he's going to need a hot shower, I guarantee you. Um, you look at his, he's got bloody arms and stuff from just taking blows after blow. And uh, he, he is, uh, he's doing, he's moving here and so forth. But uh, it's, uh, it's been a heck of a day for him. And uh, now he's getting up to his feet. And uh, I guarantee you he'll be back out there. Boy, they build him tough in Butte, huh? Butte tough. They sure do. They sure do. And what an awesome run. Again, that never quit attitude. I love it. Sean Austin is going to come into the game again at quarterback. Looks like they're going to go for two here. Montana State down 39, 18, eight minutes to go in the game. Cats are desperate. I mean, that's where you're at right now, late in this fourth quarter. Yeah, you're trying to make a little bit of a push here. We'll see. Sean Austin, they're going to give him an opportunity to throw it. He's a capable thrower. No doubt. And, and, and very athletic, too. He's got a, a guy that can make some plays with his feet as well. We'll see if they're going to give him an opportunity to throw it here. Maybe one of those run pass options. Try and get him outside the pocket, potentially make a play with his feet. Two-point try. Sean Austin is 13 for 15 through the air this year. Thomas in motion from right to left. Three receivers to the left. Elijah Elliott in the backfield in this two-point attempt. Here's the snap. Austin looking to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Moving to his right. Fires. Incomplete. Not free. Intended for Trayton Pickering. More terrific coverage by South Dakota State. And that is going to take us to a timeout. Hang on, was there a flag there? Official looks like they're going to say something to us. Illegal formation, offense, okay. five players in the backfield. Penalty's declined. Trial for point is no good. All right, that'll take us to a break. 8.08 to go in the ballgame. Montana State season hanging on by a thread down 39-18 against South Dakota State. We'll take a break. This is Bobcat Football from Learfield.
The Bozeman Chamber of Commerce is a proud partner of Bobcat football. Montana State will kick it away. 8.08 to go in the game. Down 39-18 against South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits have looked every bit of the number one team in the nation today. They went 8-0 in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. 12-1 overall. They beat North Dakota State at North Dakota State in October of this year. South Dakota State anticipating a, uh, an onside kick here. Everybody's bunched up. One man back at the 25. And they do try the onside kick. And it is gobbled up quickly by South Dakota State. So they will take over in plus territory just shy of the 40-yard line. Bobcat Nation, Toyota has created a rewards program specifically for you. As part of the Toyota Rewards Program, you can win exclusive swag throughout the year along with receiving a premium giveaway in the mail each time you bring your vehicle in to be serviced at your local Montana Toyota dealers. To join the program, visit msubobcats.com slash Toyota Rewards to register. Toyota, proud to be a partner of Bobcat Athletics. Well, Cats need a turnover or something. 8.06 left in the ballgame, down 39-18. Really haven't shown much of an ability to uh, slow down the South Dakota State offense at all. 455 yards for the Jackrabbits, 266 on the ground. Here's the snap. They keep it. No, they did hand it off to Johnson, who spins off one man and gets a little further and is up for a uh, pretty decent gain. And that'll bring up second down. New quarterback was in on that play. Looks like he is still out there for uh, South Dakota State. So... Uh, Gronowski getting a little bit of a breather as uh, Rudy Voss is into the ball game. Yeah, probably a smart call. You think about Gronowski, who was hurt years ago, a couple years back in that spring national championship. You want to avoid that if possible. Now flag. Ball start. Offense, number 87. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Don't forget, the Cats are coming right back here for game two of next season. A home and home series starts between these two programs next year in the uh, second game of September. So no FBS game for Montana State next year, and they've got that. Yeah, yeah, and pretty interesting if you think about it. Uh, you know, you don't often, uh, often get those rematches just because you're out of conference, right? And to think about them being back here in, in uh, a short amount of time, pretty interesting. They're going to get uh, another rematch with them. Snap to Voss. He fires to Johnson on the left side outside the numbers. Had a nice tackle by Ryland Ort. About a three or four yard gain. And that'll bring up a third down for uh, South Dakota State. But it wouldn't be so weird if you didn't have this semifinal game here. It makes sense, right? I mean, that's that's a nice kind of home and home and an opportunity where you, know, you get two of the better FCS programs fighting it out in September. That's something that's going to be good for the game, good for the program. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's not a FBS matchup as you talked about, but it, it might as well be as, as capable as South Dakota State is. Uh, that's going to be a huge matchup here early fall next year. Shotgun snap to Rudy Voss. He's under pressure, throws. That is incomplete and off the mark. Fourth down. Right now Voss still on the field. There we go. Now the uh, the punter and kicking crew are heading out. Yeah, Dan, uh, going to be kind of weird coming right back here where really, I mean, you're going to end up playing South Dakota State potentially in two out of three games. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna get to know each other pretty well here with the end of this one and then into the into next fall because both squads have a lot of guys back next year. Yep. Here's the snap for the punt. This right-footed kick, a high arcing kick, beautifully done, and a fair catch called for at about the 15-yard line by Taco Dollar. We'll take a break. 6.21 to go in the ball game in Montana State on the wrong side of a blowout, down 39-18. Back after this, this is Bobcat Football from Learfield.
621 to go in the ballgame. Montana State trailing 39-18 against South Dakota State in the semifinals of the FCS playoffs. Cats uh, struggling against the Dakotas and uh, down big today. But, Mikey, you know, you think about some of these sixth-year seniors for Montana State, and just this program is better than when they found it when they came in. Yeah, absolutely, and that's a goal when you come in. You want to make sure you're... Uh, holding up that Bobcat standard and just advancing the program, and they have certainly done that. Uh, and there, I mean, yeah, there's no doubt they have left it better than they found it, and that's an encouraging thing. Sean Austin uh, into the ball game as the quarterback. Tommy Malott's been roughed up a little bit. We did see him at down on the field after that last potential injury. Dan, do you see uh, Malott? You think he's done for the day here? Uh, we'll see. I, I, I would say he would be done. Yeah. It looked like he might no have hit it. to do that right now. Yep, and I, I think he might have hit his head there on that last uh, touchdown run. Two receivers right, two to the left. Snap to Austin, looking to throw. Firing down the left sideline, caught. Cleavan Thomas had it. No, Willie Patterson. Yes, Willie Patterson, rather. He's got the first down. Nice catch by Willie Patterson. He's one of those sixth-year seniors and certainly elevated this program and elevated the people around him. The, his teammates are better football players for being a teammate with Willie Patterson. Yeah, and what a productive senior season for Willie. So many touchdown catches and a great leader. Snap to Austin, fires out to Coy Steele. He makes the catch in the flat on the right side, and he's twisted out of bounds, three or four yards shy of the first down marker. Second down coming up for the Cats. Another guy, Coy Steele, uh, who's been here a long time, has helped elevate this program and came back from an injury late and uh, able to get in there and make a catch today. Yeah, made a, a name for himself. Came as a walk-on, shared native. What a great career for Coy Steele. Snap to Austin. He fires, and it is knocked down. Looking for Elijah Elliott, the flat on the right side. And it got swatted down by the defensive line. Still a lot coming back for the Cats, especially in that backfield with Tommy Mallott, Sean Chambers, Isaiah Fonse, that whole offensive line is planning to come back. I mean, there are a lot of weapons to set up for a long, sustained run, but obviously this is not how you expect it to turn out against South Dakota State. I think people thought the Cats were a lot closer to what the Jackrabbits were coming into this game. This has been a surprised score with the Cats down 39-18, 5.31 to go in the ball game. Montana State facing third and four from their own 34-yard line. Shotgun snap to Austin, looking to throw, clean pocket, takes a shot down the left sideline. That ball is knocked free. No flag intended for Coy Steele. Fourth down coming up for the Cats. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Now, if you know you're going for fourth down here, it gives you a little bit of a sense of security to try to take that shot down the left sideline. Now they will huddle up. Clock stop, 524 mark, down 39-18. Montana State's 10-game winning streak on the line here. They're not lost to an FCS program this year. They're down big here in the semis. Two receivers left, two to the right. Sean Austin getting some more good playing time. The freshman from Idaho. Chest high snap, looking to throw. Steps up to his right. He tucks it and runs. Puts his shoulder down. Dives forward, and he got there. First down for the Cats. First interstate bank first down, and a hearty blue-collar run by Sean Austin. Boy, he's not afraid to lower that shoulder. No, and good to see him getting in the game here. This is These are meaningful reps, and we can see a little flash of Sean Austin. We see him in a, in a lot of mop-up duty, but he's commanding the offense well. He's thrown some nice balls. have scrambled here. Good to see. Shotgun snap from the right hash mark on first down. He throws. That is caught. Ravi Alston, he's got the first down. Slips one tackler and finally brought down from behind close to the 40-yard line. That is a beautiful laser out of the right hand of Sean Austin. Yeah, Ravi Alston just runs a, a seam route, kind of, of a bender behind those linebackers. He clears, and right when he clears, Sean Austin delivers a just a laser, puts it right on the money. That's a nice throw. Good protection up front. So a lot of the starters on the field defensively for South Dakota State. First down from the 40. Snap, throw, caught. Willie Patterson makes the catch on the sideline on the left side. Just shy of the first down marker. Give him seven or so yards. Yeah, I think it's seven yards, second and three. Another rhythm throw. Just an out route. A timing pattern. Good protection up front. Sean Austin delivers a nice catchable ball to Willie Patterson right on the left set, edge of the sideline. Here's Isaiah Fonse back into the ball game. Only seven carries for 28 yards for Fonse. Overall, the Cats, 31 rushes, 52 yards today. That is it. 
One receiver left, three to the right, here's the snap. Austin fakes the handoff, he runs left and fires, incomplete. And a flag is on the field. So he tried to throw it after faking the handoff. It looked like it was a, kind of a bootleg and a run, but Patterson was set up on the left sideline. Brent Vegan seems uh, unhappy with how it all went down. Let's see what this flag is. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 48, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. All right, unnecessary roughness. We'll see if we get a look of it. Austin was rolling out to his left. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was like four steps before he hit him. Yeah, that was an easy call. Yeah, easy call. Didn't see that, but he took, yeah, two or three steps there, yeah. pushed him right in the back. Yeah, there's no need to hit him there. Easy flag. From the left hash mark, fresh set it out. First interstate bank, first down into the Rose Hours red zone, up to the 17-yard line. Caps down 39-18, 4-17 to go in the semifinals. Shotgun snap with an empty backfield. Austin steps up in the pocket. Still looking to throw now. Tucks it, runs left, and scampers out of bounds after a five or six yard gain. Second, very manageable coming up for the Cats. Good decision to tuck it and run. I like him. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Maybe going to step up and throw it, but eventually pulls the ball down, able to scramble for a nice five yard chunk. No turnovers in this ball game. Montana State did have one fumble that they did not lose. But this has just been all about South Dakota State's offense. Up 39-18 over the Cats. Two receivers left, two to the right. Elliott in the backfield, the left hash mark. Second down snap to Austin. Looking to throw. Steps up under pressure. Slips one man and tackled from behind by another. Kate Johnson got him. Third down. Yeah, tried to escape out of that same left side of the line of scrimmage. A little bit of daylight there. But those defensive tackles in hot pursuit able to bring him down. Yeah, they are quick, big, and athletic up front. One receiver left, three to the right, shotgun snap. Austin hands it off, and Elijah Elliott is swarmed in the backfield on the right side. He had absolutely no chance. About a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth and ten. The Cats backed up behind the 15 now. Yeah, no, no chance there. Just knifing in. Derek Snell, his, his guy just crosses his face and knifes right in there and makes the play. Fourth and 11. Cats going backwards on the last two plays. They're going to go for it here from their own, or from the 18-yard line of the red zone. Here's the snap. He throws. Caught on the right side by Coy Steele. Short of the sticks. Angling back left and caught. Short and a turnover on downs. It's going the other way for South Dakota State with 242. And Jackrabbit fans can start booking some tickets down to Texas. Jack's up 39-18. Know what's below, tap, click, or call 811 before you dig. Brought to you by Montana, 811.org. Officials discussing something here. We're going to get a word from one of our officials. No, we're good. Looked like he was going to say something, but. Nope. South Dakota State about to find their way back to the national championship game for the second time in three seasons. Pistol formation, backup quarterback Rudy Voss into the game. And ready to go to work from his own 10 yard line. Snap, hands it off. Johnson runs right through the line of scrimmage, breaks one tackle, and then he's upended at the 15 yard line. Kyle Rigg in the ball game for Montana State. A lot of the starters still in there defensively for the Cats. The journey Rig has been on. The guy's going to be able to get a few snaps here at the end, although there are only a couple left for Montana State in this season. Winding things down. Cats will open up next year against Utah Tech on September 2nd. Second and four. Under two minutes to play. Here's the snap. They hand it off, Johnson hits the line, and he is bottled up. Callahan O'Reilly is right there. Callahan O'Reilly, only a snap or two left in his Bobcat career, the Bozeman native. He'll be uh, followed by his younger brother, McCade O'Reilly, who has had some great minutes and great snaps to this point in the season. But Callahan O'Reilly, man, he's one of those guys that there's not going to be a statue of him somewhere, but he has certainly elevated this program in his six years. Oh, and he's been so productive. and. 
I think, you know, probably played at a higher level than a lot of people would have anticipated. He was a, you know, really good high school player out of Bozeman High, but, uh, I mean, he has started and played a lot of football for the Bobcats and seen through some coaching changes, and he's just been one of those glue guys that played so well. Snap, handoff, Johnson up the middle, upended by uh, Jeffrey Manning Jr. They got the first down. And it's victory formation time for the Jackrabbits. Interwest Moving and Storage is the official moving company of the MSU Bobcats. And we remind you that Bobcat football is presented by My McDonald's Reward. Download the McDonald's app to start earning free McDonald's and great game day deals. Fans throwing snow up into the air, hopping around, jumping around. The two lines shaking hands right now. Sour finish, but ultimately, you know, the Cats and the Jackra Jackrabbits are one and one in semifinal matchups. Yeah, we've got a new rivalry, it sounds like, guys. So what do you think? I think so. Snap and a knee. And that will finish it off. Brent Vegan jogging out. He will uh, meet John Stiglmeyer over on his side of the field. Stiglmeyer's been there for 26 years. His first year was Brent Vegan's last year as a tight end at North Dakota State as a player. The two meet in the middle of the field. And just like that, this season has come to an end. Cats fall to 12 and two with the loss in the semifinals. They lose today, 39-18. We'll take a break. Plenty more to get to after this. This is Bobcat football from Clearfield. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get him right here by the flagpole when he comes out after he talks to the team. Okay. okay. Got it. I'll keep an eye out for you there. So just squats for me. Got it. Well, good for the Jacks. <clears throat> Did you say that Kagan Williams is uh, is coming back? No, he's done. He, he's done. Okay. He went through senior day stuff. What about Reddy Short? He's done too, right? Yeah.
All right, just a few seconds, Dan. Got it. Catch ball, 39-18. Dan Davies is down with head coach Brent Vegan. Dan? Yeah, we were with Coach Vegan. Hey, in this tournament, everybody but one team loses the last game. But, boy, you got to be proud of your guys for the season this year. Yeah, we, we went uh, went through a lot, overcame a lot to get to this game. Obviously, we wanted to take it one one game further. Um, awfully proud of our guys. Uh, but a lot of credit goes to South Dakota State for how they played today. And uh, this senior class of the guys that are have been here for a number of years now, some of them six years. I know you're proud of them, too. Yeah, what a group. You know, in uh, a lot of ways, an extension of last year's group. Um, accomplished a whole heck of a lot in their time here at Montana State. Um, laid an amazing foundation for those to follow them. And really, when it comes down to it, that's what it's all about. You know, leave it better than you found it, and there's no question these guys did that. And talk about a foundation, you know, into the, the final four, two years of the championship a year ago. Man, uh, the foundation is set here and still got to grow a little bit, but God, you got to be proud for how much you and your staff have accomplished. Yeah, we've got a good football program with amazing support. And, um, you know, the, the group that returns, uh, you know, we'll have to go back to work here in about a month and uh, set our sights on climbing even higher next year. Um, you know, we aim high here, and uh, we're going to work real hard to get, get as far as we can. All right, congratulations again on a great year. Go on there and talk to your team. All right, thanks. Guys, back up to you, Coach Vegan. Thank you, Dan. Again, talking to head coach Brett Vegan. appreciate him sharing some time and insight even before he goes talks to his guys. A lot of emotional hugs and, and saying goodbye uh, for a lot of these guys. All right, let's pause 10 seconds for our network station identification. This is Bobcat Football. Keaton Glogley alongside uh, Mikey Ryder, Dan Davies, Dylan McPhail, and uh, Jesse Ropolato, Mon uh, Montana State, falling today 39-18 against South Dakota State. And, Mikey, we did just hear from uh, head coach Brent Vegan here a, a, a moment ago. And uh, there's a lot of pride, but uh, this is just not the showing you expected to see from the Cats. They rushed for just 52 yards today. South Dakota State was clearly the better team today. Yeah, yeah, you got to give credit to – to South Dakota State. I think they controlled the line of scrimmage um, and uh, protected their home turf. They're a very capable team. Um, and I think, you know, their their start or their fast start, their capable offensive line, defensive line that was so disruptive. Um, it just had Montana State uh, on their heels figuratively, but then also literally. I mean, they, they were on their heels and uh, really unable to get any momentum. And so, I think uh, they outplayed the Bobcats today. I don't think the field conditions helped the Cats and their style of offense and what they wanted to do and what, they, what they're designed to do offensively to kind of get some of that momentum back and how they're built. It, 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 it did not play in their favor. So uh, hats off to, to Coach Stiegelmeyer and this awesome team. Uh, my money's on them as they head to Frisco. Yep, and the Cats will be right back here in game two of the season next year on September 9th. So quite the uh, quick turnaround to come right back to Brookings. I mean, it's so rare, but kind of Dan mentioned it. I mean, a little bit of a, a rivalry brewing here. Yeah, I think so. And, and uh, two very capable programs, well-supported, well-thought-of, and uh, – It'll be interesting to come back here. The weather will be a whole lot nicer, <laughs> which will be interesting. So uh, it's going to be a little bit of a rivalry. I think that's fun when you have those that are out of conference. Yeah. And you kind of, for whatever reason, be it uh, scheduling and playoffs, and you get f quite a few run-ins. It'll be a fun little rivalry that's getting established here between these two really good programs. All right, we are on the Ribbon Chop House postgame show at Montana's Ribbon Chop House. Our staff is dedicated to extra uh, creating extraordinary experiences that raise the bar in each of our communities. Enjoy premium steaks, fresh seafood, and award-winning baby back ribs. We look forward to sharing a little Rocky Mountain hospitality with you. We'll take a break. Back after this, Cats lose it. Season's over. They fall 39-18 against South Dakota State. This is Bobcat football from Learfield.
Back on the Raymond Chop House post-game show. Montana State falling 39-18 against South Dakota State. All right, up next, uh, let's take a listen to the first Security Bank highlights of the ball game. We can hear those right now. Those were our first Security Bank highlights of the game. Just uh, two town pump touchdowns for the Cats today. Montana State falls 39-18 when we get, we'll take a break. And when we get back, we'll have Dan Davies rejoin us up here in the First New State Bank broadcast booth. Cats fall 39-18 against South Dakota State. This is Bobcat football from Learfield. Got it. Test, one, two, one, two, test, 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 one, two, one, two. 